probably a light shower just before the well, right after the Indian took batting practice, but now the skies have cleared. We have patches of blue. It's a delightful evening. And the Indians taking on the Detroit Tigers. The Indians have had one series with the Tigers in, and they tell us 75 degrees, so the temperature actually gone up again. Down about 71 a while ago. 75 degrees here at the stadium, and really pleasant. The Indians against the Tigers this year have met in one series. That series was in Detroit. And in the series in Detroit, they split the two games played. Billy Carter just tossed out the first ball to Ray Fossey. Ray Fossey promptly gave it right back. So Rick Waits getting his first start of the year. Rick is 6'3", 195 pounds, 20 years old. He hails from out around Atlanta, Georgia. And later on this evening, I'm sure the folks in Atlanta, there's lots of relatives down here with mom and dad, they pick us up once the sun goes down and they'll be tuned in following the progress of Rick Waits. Waits has won three. He has not lost this year. All his appearances have been out of the bullpen. He is the first left-hander to start a game this season with the Indians. In addition to the three wins, he's also saved one game and overall has earned run average at 3.72. So Rick Waits taking on the Tigers of Detroit. Looking at the Indian notes Rick Waits in his lifetime against the Tigers. No wins and four defeats. So a good time for Rick to pick up his first win against the Tigers. And he's lost four games in a row. And they'd like to stop that losing streak right here. Ron LaFleur, who's been hitting the ball well of late. In fact, last night, when Mark Fidrich pitched that fine game and won, LaFleur banged out a couple of home runs. So the speedy center fielder will lead off. Umpire Cooney dust off home plate. Joe Tate is here, ready to go, and he is about to tell you that it is. A beautiful night for baseball. Thank you, Herb. Good evening, everybody. Ron LaFleur, the center fielder, hitting at 263, five homers, 22 RBIs, three for eight against the Indians this year with one run batted in. And as Herb mentioned, LaFleur has been batting well, hit safely in these last four ball games, eight out of 14 in that span, and has also hit safely in 14 of his last 17, hitting 339 in that distance. Wind up and waits first pitch, and LaFleur takes on outside, ball one. Boxy at first, Kuiper at second, Duffy at short, Dade at third, Grubb in left, Norris in center, Lowenstein in right, Fossey catching, and left-hander Rick Waits throws to LaFleur, and he fouls it back on the count of even at one and one. Fred Hatfield coaching at third base, and Nick Krasuski on the first base side. One ball, one strike. Waits looks in, gets the sign from Fossey. LaFleur, right-hand batter with a black number eight on the back of his gray jersey and the pitch inside, a pass ball, and the count is two and one. Tigers will play here tomorrow afternoon at two and then a Sunday doubleheader starting at one with a jersey day. Two-one pitch to LaFleur, swing, and a miss, jammed in. And the count is even at two balls, two strikes. LaFleur steps back for the moment. Now he gets back in. Waits pops the ball into the mid a couple of times, puts in the far feet for the side. And here comes the 2 2 pitch to LaFleur. Inside, full count of 3 and 2. Kirk Waits in his relief rolls 14 times, has pitched 29 innings. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Going inside, ball 4, LaFleur walks. Waits now in those 29 innings has struck out 15, walked 14, and it brings up the switch hitting second baseman, Tito Fuente. Fuente is hitting a 310, one homer, 18 RBIs, four for seven against the Indians, one homer, two RBIs. And Fuente is connected in 12 of his last 14 games, hitting 368 in that span. As a right hand batter, he's hitting 337 as opposed to 292 as a lefty. And at first base, LaFleur leads this ball club with 14 stolen bases and 22 drives. The stretch by Waits, and he steps back. LaFleur doesn't move. Foxy holding in the bag. Now the stretch by Waits. Lefty looking at first and throws that way, and that puts LaFleur back on the bag. And LaFleur, of course, last year had himself a big season before injuring a knee and having surgery, but they say he's come back from that knee injury exceptionally well. A stretch. 
And the pitch, Fuentes punts hard to the mound, grabbed by Wake, throws low to second, Duffy digs it, throws it back, but not in time for the double up. Now Fuentes punted the ball, but he punted sharply right back to the mound, and Ray Waits made the quick draw at the second base to get a look four. And the fielder's choice puts a runner at first base now with one out. Off of the designated hitter, left hand batter, Rusty hitting a 225, homers 27 RBIs at 0 for 5 against the Indians this year. Scott has had a hit in each of his last four games, four hits in his last 16 at bats. Stretch by weight, lefty against lefty, and the pitch. And Scott hits a high fly ball to center field. Norris cruising back in front of the 395 sign, makes the catch, 20 tags, coming to second base, and he is fighting safely. center field off the bat of Rusty Staub and put his tag and moved to second base after the catch. Two outs. Steve Kemp, the left fielder, is due. Kemp hitting 253, seven homers, 31 runs batted in. Two for seven against the Indians with one run batted in. So the Indians want me to be sure to join with them in wishing a speedy recovery to Keith Shady and Brian Archaki. They were hit by a car in a crosswalk in front of the new Cleveland Indians retail store. Both have been released from the hospital and are reported to be doing well. They are both 12 years old, and let us indeed hope that they are both doing well. Steve Kemp is a left-hand batter. And on deck comes Jason Thompson. Tigers against left-handers this year have won 10 and lost 12. They're moving Norris now over a few steps into the left field side of straightaway center. Wade steps back. 20s at second, two outs, first inning. Lead-off man walked, he was forced at second, stop with a fly ball deep to center, moving 20s down to second base. The stretch by Waits and the pitch, and Kemp looks at the curve for a strike, strike one. It'll be Rosma pitching for the Tigers tonight. in, gets the sign. Here's the stretch. And the strike one pitch. Kemp lays off a breaking ball. The count is even at one and one. Well, you can hear uh, the, vid, uh, the bird, Mark Fidrich, all the way up here on the broadcast booth. He's sitting down on the dugout to the third base dugout, and he is making all kinds of noise. They say he was really flying last night. One hour and 39 minutes. Now the stretch. Look back, turn, but no throw. Neither Kuiper nor Duffy had made a move to the bag. One ball and one strike. A stretch by Waits. And the pitch to Kemp, and Kemp takes it outside, and the count goes to two and one. Ball game just getting underway here at the stadium. Waits again. Looks in for the sign. Kemp levels the lumber and waits. Here's the stretch. And the 2 1 pitch. Kemp swing and a miss. And the count is 2 and 2. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a runner at second base. Jason Thompson is on deck. A stretch by Waits. The 2-2 pitch. Kemp hits it right up the middle. Kuiper can't get it. It's off his glove into center field. A run will score. Kemp's going to try for two. Norris, the pickup throw in. Bad throw. Comes all the way through to the mound. Tigers lead one to nothing. Well, Kuiper did all that he could on that line drive. He leaped up to his right, got some leather on it. And unfortunately, it slowed the ball down enough so that Norris had to make a long run. What he's scoring easily in Kemp at his second base. There goes a double. And Kemp now with 32 RBIs. The rookie's off to a pretty good start. First hit off Waits. Jason Thompson, a left-hand batter. Thompson, the first baseman, hitting 270 with 10 homers, 39 runs batted in. Three for eight against the Indians. And he has driven in three runs against Cleveland this year. 
Kemp at second base with two out. And ultimately is on deck. Stretch by Wings. And a pitch to Thompson. Low ball one. Now looking ahead tomorrow, it'll be Roberts against Eckersley. Sunday, Hiller and Fernando Arroyo against Garland and Bibby. Ben Oglevy on deck, and the pitch to Thompson, a strike behind the outside corner. The count evens up 1-1. One, one. Now walk, fielder's choice, long fly ball, and a double. Tigers lead 1-0. A stretch by Waits. And the pitch to Thompson, a curve ball high, and the count goes to 2-1. Kuiper back on the edge of the outfield, grabs at second base. Outfield straight away for Thompson. Looking for the sign by the left-hander, waits, nods, stretches. And the pitch to Thompson, he hits a looper to the left, upstairs out of play, and the count is still 2-2. at 27 and 31 have won their last three. The Indians at 24 and 31 have dropped their last four. Tigers hitting 252 against the league with 59 homers and hitting 254 against the Tribe with one home run. Indians 260 against the league and 317 against Detroit. Here's the stretch. 2-2 pitch. Thompson hits another looper upstairs. Behind home plate it's still 2-2. Indians have had 27 home runs against the league and one against the Tigers. Detroit is 10 and 15 at home, but they are 17 and 16 on the road. The Indians are 11 and 15 here at the stadium and 13 and 16 on the road. Long look for the sign by Waits. Shakes off a couple. Now he nods at the one. Here's the stretch. Look back to Kemp. 2-2 to Thompson, and Thompson reaches out and pokes a foul again upstairs. And it's still 2-2. Have a nice note from Lori from Lorraine providing some goodies and tells us that her sign reads, Pruitt can do it. Pruitt has shown that he can. Runner at second base, 2-2 two -two count with two down in the first inning. The Tigers have a one to nothing lead. A stretch. Waits with the pitch. Thompson swings, drives it right up the middle into center field ahead. Here comes Kemp around third base. Norris to pick up. No throw to the plate, and the Tigers lead two to nothing. And both left hand hitters, Kemp and Thompson, have done the damage. Now Detroit with a two to nothing lead. For Jason Thompson, his 40th run batted in. Here's Ben Ogleby, another lefty. Hitting 243, 10 homers, 21 runs batted in, and one for eight against the Cleveland Indians. Now Fitzmaurice is up and throwing an in Indian bullpen. In the top of the first, and the Tigers have scored twice. The pitch, Ogilvy takes a strike at the knees, strike one. Now waits the stretch, and the pitch to Ogilvy. He takes low, the count is even, one, one. from Fossey. The stretch. And the 1-1 pitch. Ogilvy hits it hard into right field. A base hit. Thompson down to second base. He takes the turn and hangs on as Lowenstein fires it back in. And that is three hits in a row. And here comes Harvey Haddix jogging out to the mound. The batter will be Milton A., the Tiger catcher. May is hitting 283, five homers, 17 RBIs, one for seven against Cleveland. And Milt May is hit safely in six of his last seven games, hitting 348 over that span. He too is a left-hand batter. Well, three of these balls up weights have been solidly packed. Kuiper returns to second base. Fossey back behind the plate. Haddix continues to talk to Waits on the mound, and the home plate umpire Terry Cooney starts out that way. And he gets we're, into the neighborhood. Haddock heads back to the dugout. As we've seen in the past, Rick, many times, has trouble getting in the groove. He's like a lot of pitches, uh, I think particularly spotting. 
He has to get himself set. And right. looks like he's floundering right now. And Harvey, they're just trying to quiet him down. If he can get out of that first inning or two, uh, he has a pretty good chance of going all the way. Now waits now to work to Milt May. Here's the stretch, the pitch, and May swings and misses on a breaking ball. Strike one. Stops it at second, Ogilvy at first. Rosema, who had finished his warm-ups, has started to work again out of the Tiger bullpen just to keep warm. And Fitzmorris is throwing for the Indians. The stretch by Waits. Runners lead. Strike one pitch. May hits a drive to left field. The grub is there. Now he goes back on the ball, stamps that line. Drive to retire the side. Another well-hit ball that slammed back in the air to John Grubb, the left fielder, and the inning is over. Two runs, three hits, a walk, and two men left. And at the end of one half inning of play, the Tigers, two, and the Indians are coming to bat. There's an up. Thank you. Billingham against Rogers, and the Reds failed in the first. Houston at New York tonight. Bannister for the Astros, and Pat Zachary will be making his first start for the New York Mets. Atlanta, Philadelphia, St. Louis at San Diego, the Cubs against the Dodgers in L.A., and Pittsburgh at San Francisco. They're playing a twinite doubleheader in Texas. The Rangers lead Seattle one to nothing in the third inning. Cole against Alexander. Baltimore, Toronto, and we've heard nothing from that one as yet. New York at Boston. Hunter against Lee, and the Yankees fail in the first inning. A bit later, Minnesota at Kansas City. Chicago hosting Oakland. California at Milwaukee, and here the Tigers lead two to nothing with the Indians coming to bat in the home half of the first inning. At Boston, Freddie Lynn homers in the first inning with nobody on. That's the eighth time this year, Boston. Well, now they've had back-to-back -back home runs. I don't know who hit the first one because it isn't on the wire, but they've had back-to-back -back home runs in the first inning at Fenway. Jim Norris, left-hander, hitting 284, one homer, 17 RBIs, three for eight against the Tigers, drive to shot at a center field base hit. single sharply right up the middle into center field and the Indians come bouncing back to get something started. You think that series in Boston may draw a few people? Mm. They just opened the door. 35,000 people will come in and sit down. I bet there was not a ticket to be had in Boston today. Dwayne Kuyper, left-hand batter, hitting 261 with 14 home runs. Two for six against Detroit with three ribbies. Kuyper has hit in four of his last five games and has now been up 1,077 times in the major leagues without hitting a home run. It ties him with Tim Johnson in Milwaukee for the most at-bats without a home run. The first pitch of all, ball one. Now the look-in for the sign. The stretch by Rosma. Lance Denoris, pitch to Kuiper, wraps the ball foul over to the first base dugout. Knocked down by Garland. The count is one and one. For the statistical wizards in our audience, the Indians and the Tigers have been in the American League since its inception, 1901. They have each won a like number of games, 6,076. How about amazing. that? Yeah. One ball and one strike. Norris at first base, he leads the Tribe in steals with 16 and 26 tries. Stretched by Roseman, the pitch to Kuiper, low, 2-1. Thompson at first, Fuentes at second, Scrivener at short, Rodriguez at third, Kemp in left, the four in center, Oakley in right, Milton A. catching, and right-hander Dave Roseman on the mound. He's 6-3 with a 2.88 ERA, has one win against the try. Pitch to Kuiper, bang up the middle in the center field of base hit. Rounding at second as far as puts on the brakes as LaFleur flips the ball back into Scribner, and the Indians have back-to-back hits -back. up Roseman. Well, there are runners at first and second, nobody out. Here's Paul Dade hitting at 315 with 16 RBIs, three for five against the Tigers with one run batted in. Paul Dade has hit in four of his last five ball games with six hits in his last 15 at bats. Rosma, his 14th start in appearance. He's 1-0 against the Tribe, leads the club in starts. Beat him 4-2 over in Detroit with a save by Foucault. Last time out, Oakland bombed him out early. Six wins, three defeats with a 2.880 RM. Stretch by Rosma, pitch to date, squares to butt, does first base side. It's a dandy! Everybody stays. a 
hesitated for just a moment, and the ball slipped by for a hit. He started in on the ball, and the ball was to the first base side of the mound, and it looked like he just couldn't make up his mind. And Livingston, and Livingston, No chance. Well, Ralph Houck has gone to the mound to talk to his pitcher with the bases loaded and nobody out, and Bruce Bakhti, the batter. The Indians spot the Tigers, two on the top of the first, and they've got a chance to come roaring back here in the home half. The conference is over. Bruce Bakhti is hitting 269 with two homers and 18 RBIs, and he's one for seven against Detroit this year. Rosna looks him over. The stretch. And the pitch to Bakhti. Swing and a miss, strike one. Rosna took something off. He threw him a change. Bakhti is one for two with the bases loaded this year and has two runs batted in with the bases jammed. And we'll get some action in the Tiger bullpen. Bakhti waiting. Here's the stretch. Bases loaded. Pitch to Bruce. He wraps a foul ball to the third base side. Strike two. Left-handed Crawford is up and throwing. Rosna wants another baseball from the home plate umpire Terry Cooney. Norris at third, Kuiper at second, Dade at first, and nobody out. Andre Thornton is on deck. Rosemont the stretch. Two-strike pitch. Bakhti chops a foul behind home plate on the ground. The count is still strike two. Bakhti is a Cleveland Indian now hitting at 248. Again, toes the rubber, gets the sign. The runners lead at every base. Two strike pitch to Bakhti, swing and a miss, struck him out. Now Roseman strikes out Bakhti with the bases loaded. Roseman now in 101 third innings of work is fan 45 and walk 16. Andre Thornton, the batter. Thornton, a right-hand hitter, hitting 162, four homers, seven RBIs. This will be his first at bat against the Tigers. Well, let's take, uh, take a look at Andre Thornton this year with the bases loaded. 0 for 4, good time to break out of it. Our home run payoff inning tonight, by the way, will be the fourth. Too bad it's not right now, because a home run here would mean $5,000. First pitch is a ball, low, ball one. John Grubb is on deck. at third, Kuiper at second, and Dade at first. Two hits to the outfield and a bunt single to load him up. 1-0 pitch. Thornton takes a little high. The count is 2-0. Oh. Rosma. 19 years of age. Matches the number on his back. Here's the stretch. And the 2-0 pitch to Thornton. Thornton takes a strike. The count is 2-1. Dave Rosemary is not alone. He's got red shirts at all three bases. The Tigers are leading 2 to nothing, but the Indians with a great chance to tie this thing up and maybe do a little bit more. Rosemary says no to one sign, then yes to the next. The right-hander stretches. And here comes the 2-1 to Thornton. He hits a high pop foul fly first base side. Thompson chasing over, but the ball is going to make the seats well beyond the dugout on the first base side. And the count evens to 2-2. Two -two. Now Fisk and Scott have homered off Hunter in the first inning. Oh, Four that. Boston home runs in the first inning. And if I remember the Boston batting order, three of those came in a row. Here, the Indians have them loaded up with a 2-2 count. Home run right here. It looks pretty good for the Tribe. Mm. Thornton has four of them for the year. Stretch and pitch. Thornton chops the ball foul over to the third base dugout. Right over the roof. Hey, a youngster picked it off. Two balls, two strikes. Dave Rose. 
Bozeman in trouble. Bases loaded. Massick coaching at third. Rocky Calavito at first base. 2-2 count on Andre Thornton. The pitch to Thornton. He hits it hard to third. Grabbed by Rodriguez. The second one. Back to first. Double play. And the Tigers go out of the inning without a run scoring. Oh, my. No runs. Three hits. And nobody left. And at the end of one inning of play, Detroit 2, Cleveland nothing. Ken Singleton is homered for Baltimore in the first inning of play. And they lead one to nothing up at Toronto, Grimsley against Vukovic. Here's the second inning, and it'll be a Rodriguez Scrivener in the top of the order of the floor. Aurelio Rodriguez, a right hand batter, hitting 231, two homers, four RBIs, and the first pitch he pops up into short right field. Kuiper back, Steiner in, Steiner under the ball, makes the catch. Almost overran it. One out. Chuck Scrivener, the shortstop. Right-hand batter, Scrivener filling in for Tommy Verizer, who's been sick over the last couple of days. Scrivener, 3 for 13 on the year, a 231 average with one run batted, and he has played against the Indians, but he has not scored against them. Or I should say he has not had a time at bat against them. Left-hander Rick Waits looks in, and the pitch. Foul ball back, strike one. ready. Here's the strike one pitch and Scribner swings and misses on the count is strike two. And Baltimore one to nothing lead is now through two innings up at Toronto where the Indians will be come Monday night. Two strike pitch and Scribner takes head high. A ball. Ball one strike two. Atlanta at Philadelphia tonight. Measure Smith against Christensen. up with a pitch. Scribner hits a fly ball to center field. Norris coming on. Makes the catch of that ladder. Two out. Ron LaFour walked in the first inning. That eventually led to a two-run rally. Although he was not around when it happened, he was forced at second base. Tigers leading in the second inning. Two to nothing. again. Cranks up the 1-0 pitch and LaFleur takes a strike. On the inside corner. Count is even at 1-1. One one. Wind up on the pitch. He hits a long drive. Way back in left field. Grub going back. Goodbye baseball. It is out of here. Brad LaFleur just hit his third home run in two nights. It hit on the concrete, took a bounce right up over the fence between the bleachers and the grandstand, and the Tigers lead three to nothing. That ball was really sucked. That is his sixth home run of the year. And the Indian pitching staff has now coughed up 56 of them. And this, our 56th game, only the second off weights this year. Fourth hit off, Rick third run. Now here's Tito Fuentes. Fielder's choice and scored in the first and Waits pours him a strike on the inside corner. Strike one. Wind up by Waits on the pitch. Inside, 1-1. One, one. throws again and what he's hits the chop to third grabbed by Dade comes into the grass and throws him out on the top half of the second inning the Tigers get one run on one hit the home run by LaFleur and at the end of an inning and a half Detroit three Cleveland nothing second inning Grubbo and standard Foster against Rosemont Rosemont Started the first inning by giving up three straight hits to low the bases. And he struck out Foxy and Thornton banged into a double play. And Rosema got out of the first inning without a run scoring. 
Milwaukee now has a three to nothing lead. Johnny Grubb hitting 325, two homers, 14 RBIs, his first at bat against the Tigers, and he chops the foul right over to the on-deck square. John Lowenstein nonchalantly reaches up and picks it off. It's like taking an apple off a tree, right? That's right. Strike one. Kozma looks in and gets the sign. Here's the wind and the pitch to Grubb. Johnny takes one outside, one ball, one strike. One pitch. Grubby takes low and outside, and the count goes to two and one. Two balls in the strike. Tigers with three runs, four hits from the Indians. No runs, three hits. Whole half of the second inning. Two one pitch. Grubb chops a foul over into the first base dugout. Frank Robinson picks that one off as it comes down to him, and the count is even at two two. Throws him back to the rosin bag. Montreal has a one to nothing lead on Cincinnati at the end of one inning of play. Boston four to nothing over the Yankees after four home runs in the first inning. Swing and a foul tip of the plate that May couldn't hang on to, and it's still two two. Dave Rosema. Two two pitch coming to the left hand batting Johnny Grubb. There it is. Grubb chops it to the first baseman. Thompson gets it, runs to the bag, and there's one out. Batter now is John Lowenstein, the right fielder, left hand batter. Steiner hitting a 290 with five over five runs batted in. He's two for seven against the Detroit Tigers. We play at two, it'll be youth day, and then on Sunday, Jersey Day, the Tigers for a one o'clock twin bill. Wind up and the pitch, and Lowenstein takes a fastball low, ball one. We're going to get a look at John Hiller turn starter on Sunday, and they tell me he has turned starter with a vengeance. He has done very well. And we'll also see a very impressive performer, Fernando Arroyo. Pitch to Steiner, big chop back to the second baseman. Fuentes has it on to first, two out. The Royals, a fellow the Indians have seen before, but in relief. Ray Fossey, the Cleveland catcher, hitting 245, three homers, 13 RBIs, four for six against Detroit pitching this year, with a homer and three runs batted in. A Texas Seattle first game of a Twinider has gone into the fifth. Texas still leading one to nothing, Cole against Alexander. Wind up, and here's Roseman's first pitch to Fossey, and Ray takes low, ball one. Haven't had a chance to talk to you, Herb, since Thursday, or since Wednesday, but I'll tell you, your prediction of California winning the Western Division really looks good now with the pitching they picked up. Well, I'll tell you, there were some changes made at the 12th hour. Fossey rams went into left field, base set. That is the Indians' fourth hit of this ballgame. I'm not sure I still know who's playing where. I guess right down to the deadline the other night, they were making wholesale changes. In fact, they made a couple at about 3 in the morning and then didn't even announce them until the next day. But the uh, California Angels now have the starting abilities of Novin Ryan and Frank Tanana, along with Kenny Brett and Gary Novin. That's not a bad front four. I say not. Duffy at bat. Frank hitting 200. One homer, nine RBIs. 0 for 5 against Detroit. And he takes one outside ball one. Well, the Minnesota Twins also knocked off Tanana and Ryan in successive days. Ryan struck out 14 and came up with the loser. Here's the pitch. Duffy takes low and inside. This time 2-0. Those home runs of the first inning for the Red Sox. Burleson, Lynn, Fisk, and Scott. That was number 16 for Scott. Puts him in the tie again with Richie Zisk. Here's the stretch. And the pitch. Duffy takes low. Ball three. and Frank takes a strike on the inside corner. The count is three and one. I don't think Duffy was in concurrence with that decision, but it's the three one count. Now the look 
for the sign. The pitch, and Duffy hits it hard, but foul between the bag at third and the coach, Jonasic. Full count of three and two. Get a chance on this next road, road trip. I'm going to do a dugout show with Jonasic, and we're going to talk about a man that was just named to the College Coaches Hall of Fame. Bob Wren from Ohio University, who was uh, Joe's coach down at Ohio U. Very qualified man. Boy, what a super baseball Nice guy. Man. Had a chance to visit with Bob last winter for a little while. Back at Ohio U, and seems very happy. Put him into the same class with uh, Dave Garcia. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Mm -hmm. Darcy Bates is short. Pick up by Scribner. Drawn to first, and the inning is over. No runs are hitting the man left, and at the end of two innings of play, it's Detroit 3, Cleveland nothing. Birthday yesterday, Marshall Vosser, the groundskeeper, one of the groundskeepers for the Cleveland Indians, celebrated a birthday. Randy Adamack tells me that Marshall is now 39. He says. Plus 39. Plus 39. Well, that's the way it goes. Rusty Stop fly deep to center field in the first inning against Waits, and this time takes it high. Ball one. Avana Orange, when he was with the Montreal Expos, came over in the Lovich deal, which turned out for the Tigers to be a jewel. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Rusty. Hits the chopper to first baseman Bruce Monty. Guess it's going to flip the weights in time. Wow. Steve Kemp doubled off Kuiper's glove in the first inning of play. Drove in a run and then later scored himself. Tigers lead 3-0. Two in the first and then a LaFleur blast. And the second, and I mean a blast, he really hammered one out of here over the 385 sign. Back for the left-hander going for the tribe. Ralph Hogg still has three, four, five left-handers in the lineup. And it's been the left-handers who really socked the ball. Here's the windup and the pitch to Kemp. He takes a strike, strike one. Skies overcast remain, uh, the skies overhead, I should say, remain overcast, but no real threat of rain at the moment. The pitch. Strike of the knees with a count of strike two. It's a very pleasant evening here at the ballpark. Temperature 75 when we began. There's not much of a breeze and just delightful. Lined up by Waits on the pitch and Kemp looks at a curveball outside and the count goes to one and two. Here's the pitch, curveball high. A couple of notes here. Barry Court has been sent back to the minor leagues to make room for Mike Caldwell, whom the Brewers picked up from Cincinnati in the Auerbach deal. And Cincinnati has activated 40-year-old Joe Horner, their pitching coach from the Indianapolis Farm Club. The pitch is low, and the count is 3-2. and two. Are they that short of pitching? Joe Horner. Boy, well, he I'll say, Joe Horner did a good job a couple of years with Texas, right. remember? Well, and he was down there with San Antonio, right. too, a few years ago. And he... Uh... Get that knuckleball. 3-2 pitch. Off the end of the bat, a dribble it is short. Gobbled up by Duffy. Throws on to first in time to get Kemp, who is really steaming down the line. Two outs. Also, Stan Thomas has been placed on the disabled list at Seattle, and his spot on the roster has been taken by Gary Wheelock. He has had all kinds of arm problems. For a while, he didn't want to say anything about it, but he got so bad, he just was not throwing well. And Wheelock has been on the disabled list right since spring training. All right. Here's Jason Thompson. He's single to drive in a run in the first inning of play when the Tigers scored two. And now leads three to nothing in the third. Wind up on the pitch and a high fly ball to left. Grubb starts in. Now he'll drift back under this one. Waiting makes the catch. So the side is retired by Waits. One, two, three. And at the end of two and one half innings of play, the Detroit Tigers three, the Cleveland Indians nothing. Hey. Three guys had hits in a row to start the ball game, and then the Indian promptly failed to score. And Dave Rosma, who waited out of that problem in the first inning, now has been spotted a three-nothing lead in the home half of the third inning. Tomorrow it'll be Eckersley against Roberts, and on Sunday Hiller and Fernando for Royal for the Tigers, and Garland and Bibby for the Tribe. It's off to Toronto for four games and over to Detroit for four games. We see the Tigers ten times in this month of June. 
Bozeman's first pitch of the third inning to Norris is a strike of the knees, strike one. Texas, one to nothing over Seattle, now at the end of five. Montreal, one to nothing over Cincinnati in the third. Here's the strike one pitch to Norris, and Norris takes low. One ball, one strike. New Kuiper on deck. Wind up, one one pitch. Norris takes outside and high. The count is two and one. Rosma does not look as sharp tonight as he did in there visit with him over in Detroit. He didn't need never score off him until the seventh inning, eighth inning. Norris drives the foul back to the left, bangs off the facing of the Loges and goes back down into the seats behind the third base dugout. And the count is two and two. And here's the windup. 2-2 two -two pitch. Norris takes low, full count 3-2. Well, we're going to have an old-timers game up in that press room tonight. I saw George Kell and Al Kaline. Kaline's not so old. Third score. All he's the old, old he's guys. He's old. <laughs> Here comes the 3-2 pitch. Shot to right. Well hammered. Ogilvy back. It is over his glove up against the wall. Norris around first. The second base standing with a double. Now Jimmy Norris is two for two. Gets the fifth hit off Roseman. And for Norris, it is his fourth. Let's count it up again. Sixth double. Well, the batter is now Dwayne Kuiper. He singled up the middle in the first inning of play. Got as far as second base before the door slammed. Norris at second. Kuiper at bat. First stretch by Rosma on the pitch to Dwayne. He's going to bunt, does first base side. Over to the pitcher, Rosma. Flips on to first base. Kuiper's out for the sacrifice. Moves Norris over to third base. Brings on Paul Dade. Dade had a beautiful bunt single on the first inning to the first base side of the mound. Doc Medich is still with Oakland. He is starting tonight in Chicago against Wilbur Wood. He's given Charlie 24 hours to make a deal for him of some kind. Of course, that was, what, two days ago. He may be using an hourglass. One out and a runner at third base. That's Medich and Wood tonight. Here's the first pitch today. Outside, ball one. Dave Rosma looks in and gets the sign. Norris leads down the line at third base. The stretch, the 1-0 pitch, and Dave swings and misses, and the count is 1-1. Hockey Cavalier is shouting down to Paul Dade out of that first base coach's box. One out, a runner at third. Rosma the stretch. The pitch to Dade. He takes high, and the count goes to 2-1. Bruce Bakke is on deck. already again the stretch and the 2-1 pitch Dade swings away drives one back to the left center field this will score the run back to get it as Steve Kemp makes the catch here comes Norris and here comes the throw not anywhere near in time it's a 3-1 ball game two out so Dade sacrifice fly ball to left field two outs and a 3-1 ball game in the third Paul Dade continues to do the job with the runner at third base He's had a good percentage of scoring those runners. He certainly has. With runners at third this year, Paul Dade has been up now ten times and has driven in eight of them. It's not bad. Pitch to Bakhti. Outside and high, ball one. On a wind up by Rosma and the pitch, and Bakhti takes the strike on the outside corner, and the count evens up at one ball and one strike. Jeff Burrows just slammed number 17 for Atlanta at Philadelphia. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Bakke hits it hard, but right back to Thompson. Down on the way to the need to get it. Goes over, steps on first, and the inning is over. On the third inning of play for the Indians, one run, one hit, and nobody left. At the end, 
of three innings of play at Cleveland. The Detroit Tigers three, the Cleveland Indians one. Inning number four, and here's Herb score. Thank you, Joe. And hi again, everybody. The Indians trail three to nothing. It'll be Ogilvy, May, and Rodriguez to face the left-hander, Nick Waits. He gave up a couple in the first inning, one in the second, and that's been it. And in the latter half of this inning, it'll be a home run payoff inning. Chris Ogilvy, a strike over the inside corner. He's single the right field his first time out. Are we getting a little precipitation? You see folks downstairs starting to stir and a few coats going on. Wouldn't happen. I hope. Ben Ogilvy, left-hand batter, way back in the batter's box. Curveball too low. He has his feet very, very close together. Fellow stands his feet that close together. A lot of times you fool him with the off-speed pitches. He fouls this curveball back. One ball, two strikes. Indians have had five base hits in the game. They've out hit the Tigers. Five to four, but the Tigers have all the runs, three of them. The Indians had the bases loaded. Nobody out in the first inning couldn't score. Talk about frustration. Hmm. That is frustration personified. One, two pitch. Ground ball sharply hit towards second base. Grabbed by Kuiper. Throws and gets him. One up, one down as Wayne Kuiper throws out Ben Ogilvy. And here comes Milt May, the catcher. May ended the first inning by lining out to the left fielder. May is the left-hand batter. Missed most of last year with a severely broken ankle. May batting at 281. He has had five home runs and 17 runs batted across. Curveball pops up, shallow left field, coming on is Grubb, going out Duffy. John Grubb says he'll take it, and he does. Two up, two down in the fourth, six in a row, polished off by Rick Waits. And the way to hitting his groove and sailing right through. Larry Haig is here from out in California. He's sitting down next to the third base dugout. Don Angelone is down there. Don has been an Indian supporter, season ticket holder since, whew, Way back, Don and his brother, longtime Indian fan. Here's Aurelio Rodriguez. He gets a strike over the inside corner. Don is, has the limousine that Mr. Carter's being driven around town in. There's a strike at the knee. Strike two. Good fastball by Waite. Two strikes. Two men down. We're in the fourth inning, and it's three to nothing to Tigers. Wind up by the left-hander. Fastball just missed that outside corner. Had it right down at the knees and just out of the strike zone. Also, Ron Scott of our flagship station stopped by a while ago. And bouncing ball to the right of the mound. Picked off by Waite. Slips the Bakke. And that is all. A very quick one, two, three inning. And Rick Waite takes care of him. Nothing across. And at the middle of four, the score. The Indians, nothing. The Tigers, three. Now we go into the bottom half of the fourth inning, and this is a home run payoff inning. And you know the rules for the home run payoff. Any Indian hitting a home run, $1,000 to our contestant. If the bases should be loaded, you get $5,000. All right, let's do a couple of those. And if nothing happens, we get two tickets for an Indian game. Okay, let's see. Batting for the Indians will be I.N.D. Thornton and A. Grabowski of Cleveland, Ohio, our first contestant in the home run payoff inning. Pitch has popped up over the mound. Coming on is the third baseman, Rodriguez, to the left of the mound, and he makes the catch. So Thornton pops the first pitch up, went out in the fourth inning, and A. Grabowski of Cleveland, Ohio, will get two tickets to an Indian game of the choice. All right. Now from Lorraine, Ohio, we just said Hank Kozlowski was here a while ago, but he's gone. But from Lorraine, Ohio, Steve Hallibuck is our contestant, and batting for him is John Grubb. Speaking of Lorraine, Ron Scott of our flagship station stopped by. He's here with the Anvil King High band parents. There's a fastball too low. They had a behind the fence party and they're here enjoying the game. So welcome Anvil King High School band parents. 
Steve Hallibuck is riding, is rooting, I should say, for Johnny Grubb. One out in the fourth. Here's the pitch. Grubb moves up the bun at it, takes it low. Ball two, two and out. It is three runs on four hits and no errors for the Detroit Tigers. A run on five hits, an errorless ball for the Indians. Johnny Grubb steps back in. He came up in the second inning, bounced out to the first baseman. 0 for 1 in the game. Dave Roseman throws. Ground ball sharply hit towards second. Grabbed by Fuentes as he gets the big bounce and throws him out. Two up, two down in the fourth inning. Nothing across. And for Steve Halibut of Lorraine, Ohio, two tickets to an Indian game of his choice. And now it'll be John Lawenstein, and John will be batting for Edward Vichowski of Lakewood, Ohio. Steiner on the air with five runs batted in, a 290 average, and looking for his first home run. And now it'd be a nice time to get it. A bunch try, and he fouls it off to the third base side. They gave the score is three to nothing. It's three to one. The Indians picked up a run in inning number three. So the Indians trailing by two. Lowenstein. Good base runner. Has good speed. And John, one of the veterans of this ball club. High drive. Right center field. Well hit. Back goes the floor. He's at the fence. And he's going to grab it right on the warning pad. Well, Edward Bachowski of Lakewood, Ohio. You had a chance. That was close. But no cigar. And so on a home run payoff inning tonight, no winners, at least money-wise, but all of the contestants will have received two tickets to an Indian game. Lowenstein flies the center. Three up, three down, nothing across in the fourth inning. And at the end of four, the score. The Tigers three, the Indians one. Stop in at Newark Chrysler Plymouth, 1290. Now we're going to the fifth inning. The Indians trail by two runs, three to one. It'll be Scrivener. The floor and Fuentes to face Rick Waits. Waits has settled down nicely after giving up three runs in the first two innings. As a slider down too low, ball one. Scribner, a right hand batter, fly to center field is only time up. Fast ball is outside. It's two balls and no strikes. Dick Waits has the sign, rocks into the motion and throws. Bouncing ball, third base side. Dade comes in, gloves it. And he throws, high throw. He throws it over the head of Foxy. Going for two is Scrivener. He'll make it easily. Well, Dade came on, grabbed that ball at the edge of the infield grass, and then threw it right over the head of Foxy. That will go as a two-base error. So with nobody out, Tigers have posted a man at second here in the fifth inning. Here's Ron LaFleur. He has walked and he's hammered a home run. Prior to that error, Waits had retired seven men in a row. Now the waiter will work out of the set position. Ron LaFleur. His two home runs last night. He's picked up another hit tonight. He now has six. Fast ball over the inside corner to the east strike. Ray Fossey out to talk with Rick Waits. The floor not only showing some power as he did the last time up, but he's fast. Indians cannot play too deep on the infield. Fouls this one off to the right. Toronto just took a page out of the Boston songbook. Woods, Raider, and Fairley have all homered in the fourth inning of play for Toronto. They now lead Baltimore 3-2. to two. How about that? And the Indians, after this weekend, will be heading to Toronto. They take on the Blue Jays in Toronto next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All night games. Inside and high. Ball one, strike two. In the end tomorrow, two o'clock. It'll be Dennis Eckersley for the tribe. And then they play a doubleheader at one o'clock on Sunday, shirt day. Blue jerseys are going to give away a really attractive. Youngsters 14 and under coming in. Every place but the bleachers will get those. 
Inside and low. Two and two. The on deck man is Tito Fuente. On the floor with Scrivener at second. Indians playing the outfield straight away against the floor. They're fairly deep. Curveball line to right center field. Racing over is the right fielder. Can't get it. Bounce off Lowenstein's hand. Picked up by John. Here's the throw into second base. Racing the third is LaFleur. He makes it standing up. Run scores. He drilled that ball up the alley and right center field. Lowenstein made a bare hand grab on it, trying to stop it before it got by him. Knocked it down on the first bounce and then it rolled away. By the time he gains ground on it, LaFleur, who can fly, is turning second. Goes as a three base hit. Gets his second RBI of the night. He now has 24 on the year. And we have Don Hood throwing in the Indian bullpen. That makes it a 4 to 1 game. That run scored by Scrivener will be unearned, of course. He was on through the air. What a run. LaFleur is on a hitting binge. He went last year with a 30-game hitting streak. The longest hitting streak in the American League in many, many years. I'll check the record. Here's Tito Fuentes, and he gets a strike over the inside corner. The Indians bring the infield in. And the pitch inside. 30-game hitting streak by LaFleur was the longest in the American League in six years. Or in the Major League in six years, the longest in the American League in 27 seasons. And he is off another streak right now. LaFleur at third. Nobody out. Fifth inning. Four to one. Tigers lead it. Ground ball fouls and left of home plate. Hit Quincy's in the foot as it went out of the batter's box and over to the third base dugout. Nice note here from Edward Shank, who tells us that uh, he and his wife are celebrating their 52nd wedding anniversary today. How about today. that? Congratulations. Rick Waits checks the runner. He throws. Fly ball center field coming on is Jim Norris. He waits for the ball. Grabs it. Here's the tag. Here's the throw. And they hold the floor up. And Jimmy Norris made a good throw to home plate. The floor held the third. One man down in the fifth inning, and that'll bring up Rusty Saab. Rusty is flying to set up, bounce to the first base with a pitcher covering. The Boston Red Sox leading the Yankees 4-3 to three after 2. That's promising to be one of those slam-bang affairs in Beantown. Now it's 4-4. Four four. The Yankees have tied it, scoring in the third. Boston now batting in the third. Boston did four home runs in the first inning. Can't be shining now. Off the hook. Pitch to Staub. A fastball just missed at the knees. Over the outside part of the plate, but a bit low. Infield drawn in. The floor at third. Waits working out of the set position. Bouncing ball inside the first baseline. It'll score the run. Down the corner it goes. Saab going for two. Lowenstein up with the ball. Saab in the second base standing. That makes it a 5-1 to one game. And here comes Frank Robinson. RBI for Saab is 28th of the year. For Rick Waits. leave the game and Don Hood will try it in for Rick Waits he goes four and one third inning he has been charged with five runs he has given up a total of six hits he did not strike anybody out he walked one well, the run scored four earned one unearned 
And Don Hood is on the scene. We'll be back to tell you about Don as we take this time out. There's an automotive distributor in Columbus that has so many parts and tools, you could just about build a car right there. Automotive Distributors Incorporated at 2981 Morse Road. Featuring nothing but the best in name brand automotive supplies, including AC Delco Products, Champion Daco 3M Standard TRW Valvoline and Wagner. And they distribute Dayton Tires and Michelin Tires. Automotive Distributors with Delco Air Conditioning Parts and Supplies and Valvoline Summer Coolant. So stop in Friday from 7.30 to 6, Saturday 7.30 to 4. One block west of Westerville Road on Morse. Automotive Distributors. Is it true that Farrah Fawcett made your shop? at Harry Cycle Center at least three times a week? Well... Is it true that Harry Cycle Center refuses to be undersold? Actually... Is it true that Harry Cycle Center has 28.95 helmets for 12.95? Now that you... Is it true that Crazy Harry and his partners are just about the nicest guys you'll ever meet? And they... And that they want everyone to feel welcome? Not only is that... Is it true that Harry really is Evil Knievel in a salesman's costume? Why don't you ever answer me? All right. No, yes, 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 and no. Harry Cycle Center, 1486 Hebron Road in Heath. Well, Don Hood, a left-hander, coming into his 17th game, 33 innings, 26 hits, 2 home runs, 12 runs, 11 of the Marine for a 3.00 ERA. Struck out 20, walked 16, and has one win, no losses, and has not as yet recorded a save. And Don Hood will be facing the Tangas with Bob at second, and Steve Kemp heading for home plate. Kemp is double in this game, and he is grounded out to the shortstop. Tigers have come out roaring here in this inning. They now lead 5-1 to one over the Indians. Tigers have made the most out of their hits. They've had five runs on six hits. Indians have one run on five hits. Frank Duffy playing deep at shortstop, and he'll keep Starb close. Starb is not a threat to steal. He is not fast to foot. So the Indians will not worry too much about him running. Hood ready to face Steve Kemp. Left hand batter. Fast ball at the knees. Strike one. Hood made one appearance against Detroit in relief. And in two and two thirds innings, he gave up one run, struck out two, gave up three hits. Montreal leading Cincinnati, one to nothing. They have played two. Side and low as he tried him with a sign on pitch and Kent moving up like he might bunt at it didn't offer. Ball one and a strike. Fifth inning at the stadium. The Indians trailing by four runs. I think we may be getting a few drops of rain. I see a few umbrellas popping up and also some rain jackets going on. Ball one, strike one. Good throws, low outside, two balls and a strike. Big left hand hitting first baseman, Jason Thompson on deck. John Hood standing on the mound, swiveling his neck around as if he had a stiff shoulder. That's sort of a habit Don has. Does it quite often. Two balls and a strike. Hood is ready. He throws. Bouncy ball past the mound. Kuiper over. Backhands the ball. Goes the first. They just do get Kemp. And on the third goes Todd. Good play by Kuiper. 4-3 on the out. Two men gone in the fifth inning. Todd has reached third. And the batter now is Jason Thompson. He wrapped the base hit to center field, driving home his 40th run in the first inning. Then he flies the left in the third. Left-hand batter. I have a feeling someday, maybe not next year or two, but next couple of years, this fellow's going to hit a lot of home runs. 6'4", 200 pounds. He's not really played that much baseball. He's 23 in July. Bouncing ball, foul off his foot in the batter's box. Strike one. Jason Thompson, last year in his first major league season, did not hit much of an average, but he just played some mighty good power. And the Tigers have high hopes for him. Thompson last season batted 218 with 17 home runs. Down to low. Ball one and a strike. He's playing in only his third major league season, or third professional season. 
and actually 1975 only played half the year so he has had limited experience one ball in a strike Bob is at third Indians trailing five to one fly ball shallow left field Johnny Grubb coming on he is there the left field awaits and he puts it away so a good job by Don Hood coming on in the fifth inning the Tigers however get a run on two hits and the run will be on two runs I should say on two hits and one of those runs is unearned there was one error one left and at the middle of the fifth inning the score the Cleveland Indians won the Detroit Tigers five well the Indians have business to do here as they come to bat in the fifth inning Fosse Duffy and Norris will try and get something rolling the Indians trailing five to one they had the big opportunity in the first inning when they had three straight singles to open the inning and then the Tigers slammed the door with a strike on the double play Ray Fossey slammed the base hit the left field his first time up Ray one for one in the game well, if you're keeping track of the statistics and Rick Waits is pitching performance four in the third inning five runs four of which, which are earned Ray Fossey digs in. Right hand winds and he throws. Fossey looks at the slider. It's low and away. Ball one. Joe Nasik coaching at third. Rocky Calavito on the first base side. Check swing. Did Fossey go around? Umpire Kosk at first base says he does. Fossey not happy. He walks out of the batter's box. Says something to umpire Cooney. And Cooney can honestly say, don't look at me. Ken Brett is going to get his first start with the Angels tonight in Milwaukee. That is, if the weatherman lets him, it's raining in Milwaukee. I haven't seen anything on the wire, Joe, about when Seba will get his start with Cincinnati. Have you? No. Zachary's pitching tonight for the Mets. I would imagine sometime this weekend. Ray Fossey. Ball one on a strike. Rose Miss Rose. Fossey swings and he misses on a changeup. Strike two. Now well, Fossey steps back in. Dave Roseman throws. It is chopped foul into the third base dugout. That ball went right up the tunnel. Dave Roseman is pitching this year. Making his 14th start. He's had six complete games. One of his wins a shutout. Coming in tonight is earned run average at 2.88. 20-year-old right-hander. Swing and a miss, right three. He picks up his second strikeout. One man out in the fifth for the Indians. And that brings along the shortstop, Frank Duffy, who bounced out to his counterpart the first time up. Dave Roseman nods just as Milt May shouts something to him. up by the right-hander. He throws. Fastball down. Shoot all ball one. Must be quite a bit of rain to the west because it's raining in Chicago and in Milwaukee. Both games have been halted. Fly ball. Shallow left field. Coming on is Steve Kenton. Now he backs up a couple of steps. Waits and he has it. Two up, two down. Roseman has now disposed of eight men in a row. Jimmy Norris, he has had a good night. A single in the first inning, a shot up the middle in the center field, and then he doubled over Ogilvy's head in right field. Looks like there might be quite a bit of rain up here over our head to the west. And dark clouds starting to roll by. Let's hope they keep rolling right on by. Two men out. Nobody on for the Indians. Fifth inning, trailing five to one. First pitch is outside, ball one. Jim Norris takes the slider. It's a bit low, over the plate, but low. Roseman now unhappy with umpire Terry Cooney. Quite a pitcher's battle in Texas. Hold against Alexander, one to nothing in the eighth inning. Texas leading, and that is the first of a twenty-nine doubleheader. Down to low, three no to Jim Norris. Norris has really had a good year for the Indians. The rookie. 
with 27 base on balls this year, and he gets a strike at the knees. 27 walks, leads the Indians. To the home run, he has 17 RBIs. And the 3-1 pitch. Ground ball, second base side. Grabbed by Fuentes at the edge of the outfield grass, and he throws him out. And nine men in a row have gone before Roseman, the fifth inning, three up, three down, nothing across. We have played five in the score here at the stadium. The Tigers five, the Indians one. Hey, the left-handed hitting catcher on deck. Don Hood goes up on top. Rosin Sack located back on the edge of the grass behind the mound. Don goes right on by it. The left hand is set to work. One two pitch. Side arm. Kirby starts to go. And umpire at third base. George Maloney says, You went too far. Strike three. Fossey immediately turned on Cooney and said, Check with somebody. Cooney looked to Maloney. Maloney raised the right arm. First strikeout of the game for Indian pitching. And it belongs to Don Hood. Batter now is the catcher, Milt May. He lined the left and he has slid the left. Left hand hitter. Son of former major leaguer Pinky May. Pinky also managed in the Cleveland Indian farm system for many years. Down to low ball one. Ben Ogilvy took a call third, well, not a call third strike, a half swing, and it goes as a swinging third strike. Fastball, foul back on the screen. Ball one and a strike to May. Don't forget now, tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, come on down and see us. The Indians taking on the Tigers with Dennis Eckersley going for the Tribe. And then on Sunday, the big doubleheader, Jersey Day, 1 o'clock starting time, and youngsters get those very attractive blue jerseys when they come in the ballpark. Curve a little bit low. Two balls and a strike. Wayne Garland and Jim Bibby will be working for the Tribe on Sunday. And working for the Tribe in the bullpen right now is Tom Buskey. Curve is outside and low. Three and one to Milt May and Ray Foss is going out to have a talk. And while that's happening, we'll catch up on the scoreboard. Three innings have passed at Chase Stadium. Houston one. Mets nothing. Zachary getting his first start for the Mets. Four innings have gone by in Montreal, and Montreal now leads Cincinnati by a count of three to one. Atlanta Phillies all tied in Philadelphia, 2-2 two -two at the end of two. We'll check the American League in just a moment. Bouncing ball, first base side, coming on to grab it is Kuiper has it, throws the first, and he gets him. Two up, two down, and before we take a look at Rodriguez, let us pause for station identification. This is the Cleveland Indians Baseball Network. This is your total sports station in Central Ohio, WWWJ, Johnstown. Aurelio Rodriguez, he has gone 0 for 2 in this game. Don Hood throws him, swing and a miss, strike one. It's Texas tonight, a doubleheader first game, they've gone 7. Texas leading Seattle 1 to nothing. It is Toronto three, Baltimore two at the end of four in Toronto. In Boston, the Yankees four, Boston four. They've gone into the bottom half of the fourth inning. Foul back on the screen, strike two, and Sam Beach hustles up the home plate with a new supply of baseball. Kansas City will be entertaining Minnesota. Minnesota has batted in the first. They failed. Kansas City now hitting. Zahn against Colbert in that one. Oakland's at Chicago with Medich and Wood hooked up. Oakland failed in the first, and it's raining. Time has been called. Two strike pitch. Just a bit high. A slant had just missed. One ball, two strikes. And in Milwaukee, they have not gotten started yet because it's raining. And that one, Brett against Sorensen. But rain has delayed the beginning of the game. And that has us completely up to date on the scoreboard. One ball, two strikes. Don Hood, now time called. Rodriguez, who missed a couple of weeks with a bad ankle, a really strained ankle. Batting average of 231 coming into this game. Way up high. Fossey has to reach up to grab it. Two and two. Rodriguez, I guess the thing I'll always remember about Aurelio Rodriguez in years to come is when he throws from third base, it's like a clothesline. 
Well, you could hang your wash on it. He really has a good, accurate throwing arm. I don't see him make many bad throws. Ball two, strike two. And he lays off the fastball outside, three and two. Two men gone. We're in the sixth. The Indians trailing five to one. Pretty good crowd on hand here tonight. In fact, a very good crowd considering the bad weather was around us. Thunderstorms all around. Good turnout. Well, the Indians would like to explode here and give them something to cheer about. Foul back. What do you say? Let's get six in the sixth. Indians haven't done that for a long time. Three balls, two strikes. Two men gone in the sixth inning. Three-two pitch. Bouncing ball foul at home plate. That came up and hit Rodriguez on his backswing. He hit it again. Three and two. Don Hood pulls on the bill of his cap. He has the sign and he is ready to work. Inside corner call strike three with a fastball. Rodriguez throws it. Oh, nice work by Don Hoodie. His face five men. He's retired them all. It's two strikeouts here in the sixth. And in the inning, no runs, no hits, nobody left. We have played five and a half at the stadium with a score. Tigers five, Indians one. Most gas stations nowadays are company-owned, and most companies just don't care the way they used to. Well, Cubs, Ohio, at the corner of Hamilton Road and Route 161, is not company-owned. This means you'll get personalized service each and every time you drive in. Cubs Ohio has tires and batteries, and they do tune-ups and brake work and all minor repairs. Cubs Ohio is open from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. on Sunday. That's Cubs Ohio at Hamilton Road and 161. Have you ever thought about using plastic pipes and fittings instead of conventional copper and galvanized materials? Plastic pipe is inexpensive, and all it takes to install is a hacksaw and a can of cement. This sounds like what you're after. See Rusty Baker at Baker Sales, 212 South Main in Mount Vernon. Baker's has total plumbing needs, all aluminum awning and siding materials, not to mention wood and coal-burning stoves and fireplaces. Baker's is open from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday and other times by appointment. Sixth inning, Kaifa, Dade, and Bakhti face the right-handed Dave Rosemer. He's just 20 years old. Rosemer, 6'3", I think it's 6'4", about 185 pounds. He pops the strike over the outside corner. Kaifa, one for one with a sacrifice. Randy Anik, the Indian PR chief, he's been busy today. Stopping by, saying hello. Fly ball, shallow center field, coming on the floor, coming on the left field and now, and yelling for it, Steve Kemp, he takes it. One up, one down, and Roseman has now retired a total of 10 men in a row. The Indians' last man to get aboard was Norris when he doubled in the third. Paul Dade has singled, and he has sacrificed. Pitch to Paul Dade. He takes the slider outside, ball one. Our field swung slightly to left for Dade. Bouncing ball, third base side. Rodriguez grabs it. He whips it across. He gets him. Two up, two down in the sixth. Indians trailing five to one, and Dave Roseman getting stronger as he goes along. Indians had three straight hits off opening the game. Morris, Kuyper, and Dade, and then they couldn't score since that time. Well, they had gotten tougher. Inside and high to the left-hand hitting Bruce Bakhti. Ball one. James Gardner is in Salem City Hospital listening to the game tonight. And his Jerry Sand is up there and says he wishes 
Jim Gardner could be with him, but he send uh, best wishes to Jim Gardner to get out of the hospital soon. There's a strike over the outside corner. Bruce Bakhti. It's a drive to right field. Well hit. Chasing back is Oglevy. It's over his head. Right first in the second goes Bakhti. And all you can say is that Mr. Oglevy played that ball badly. Because he started in and then drifted back and suddenly found out that he couldn't catch up with it. Oglevy fooled by that ball and a double. Put number six for the Indians. Here's Andy Thornton. He has grounded into a double play. He has popped to the third baseman. Indians with a runner at second. Schumann out. They trail by... Andy Thornton with four home runs on the year. Seven RBI. Inside. Almost hit him. Ball one. Picks up two runs in the sixth inning, and they now lead four to three over Toronto. Ball one pitch to Thornton. Brown ball sharply hit a left field base hit. Back to round third. He'll score. In the first base and holding is Thornton. The Indians make it a five to two game. Oh, Andy Thornton comes through with his eighth RBI of the year. department 7-6. Here's Johnny Grubb. Grubb is grounded to the first baseman. He is grounded to the second baseman. Caught on at first. Pitch. Grubb swings and he misses on the chain. Steve Polk called and started to work on the Tiger bullpen. In the game that Roseman defeated the Indians in Detroit, football came in to get the final two out. On deck, law sign is that led Donut up on the bat, wailing away in the on deck position. Swing and a miss, strike two, sinking fastball. Johnny Grubb 0 for 2 in this game. He likes to pick up a hit right here, keeps the rally going. Caught at first. There's a sinking fastball outside. One ball, two strikes. Well, he really turned that ball over. Makes my elbow hurt just watching him throw that one. Mm. And two pitch. Guy to left center field. Steve Kemp is there, and the left fielder puts it away. Sixth inning, the Indians get a run. Two hits, no errors. They leave a man. And at the end of six here in the stadium, it's the Tigers five, the Indians two. Now well, we go to the top half of the seventh inning. Scrivener, the number nine man of the Tiger order, then with a four and Fuentes against Don Hood. Hood, he's come on done a fine job in relief. Has faced five men and retired them all. Boxy at first, Kuiper at second, Duffy at short, Dade at third. Robin left, Norris in center, Lowenstein in right. The catcher is bossy and put on the mound. Wait started, knocked out after four and a third, giving up six hits, including the blast by Ogilvy. Gave up five runs, four of them earned. Scrivener has lined to center field and been safe on an error by the third baseman, Paul Day. The wind-up on the pitch, and Scrivener hits a high pop fly ball to right field. Kuiper out, Steiner coming in, Lowenstein under the ball, makes the catch. One out. Brings up the top of the order, Ron LaFleur. He has been busy tonight. He has walked, he has homered over the 385 sign in left center, and he has tripled. He's driven in two, and he scored two. Five to two, the Tigers lead. The ball game down in Texas is now in the ninth. First of a twilight doubleheader. Texas still leading one to nothing behind Alexander. Wind up on the pitch and LaFleur takes a strike. Squared as if to bunt and took the pitch for a strike. Strike one. Greg Lozinski just did a three-run blast in the third inning at Philly. The Phils are now on top of Atlanta 5-2. to two. George Foster at his 16th with two men on at Montreal. And the Reds go up over Montreal 4-3. to three. High pop fly ball off the bat of LaFleur into right center. Norris cruising over under the ball and makes the catch. Two out. Seven in a row 
retired by Don Hood. This brings up Tito Fuentes. Fuentes, safe for the fielder's choice with a run scored in the first inning. He is bounced to third and fly to center field. Fuentes takes a strike on the curveball, strike one. Tomorrow at two, Dennis Eckersley goes against Dave Roberts. Here's the windup by Hood and the strike one pitch, and Fuentes swing and a miss at a breaking ball. The count is strike two. Picked up two in the first, a, point, a, uh, a four home run in the second, and two more in the fifth inning. Indians with single runs in innings three and six. The pitch, Fuentes left to fire on a check swing and struck out on a high outside pitch. And Don Hood has now retired eight men in a row, including the side of the last two innings, and he chalked up his third strikeout while doing it. So we have played six and one half innings at the stadium. And you Indian fans, wherever you happen to be, up on your feet for the seventh inning stretch. The score, Detroit 5, Cleveland 2. You could win $5,000, $1,000, or tickets to a Cleveland Indian baseball game. As 3WJ, Central Ohio sports leader, invites you to participate in the home run payoff game. Here's how the game works. At the beginning of each Indians game, Indians announcers Joe Tate and Herb Score will announce which inning has been designated as home run payoff inning. Each time an Indian comes to bat that inning, the name of one randomly drawn contestant will be announced. If your name is announced and the batter hits a home run, you'll win $1,000. If he hits a grand slam homer, you'll win $5,000. If your name is announced and no home run is hit, you'll still receive two reserve seat tickets to a future Indians game. And even if your name isn't drawn during the payoff inning, you can still win two box seat tickets to an Indians game from 3WJ. As we'll give away a pair of box seat tickets at noon every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the remainder of the season. All you have to do is enter, send your name, address, and phone number to Home Run Payoff, 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Home half of the seventh inning, Indians trail 5-2. They've out hit Detroit, 7-6. to six. Lowenstein, Fossey, and Duffy, the bottom three in the order. Scoreboard, Cincinnati, 4-3 over Montreal in the sixth. The Mets in Houston now 1-1 in the fifth. Philadelphia, 5-2 over Atlanta in the fifth. The Texas, 1-0 over Seattle in the ninth. First game of a twin-eyed doubleheader, Alexander against Cole. Here's the windup of the pitch to Steiner, and John takes the strike from Roseman. Strike one with Poe called in the bullpen for the Tigers. Baltimore 4, Toronto 3, they're in the 8th at CNA. Yankees in Boston 4-4 four, four in the 4th. Minnesota, Kansas City scoreless in the 2nd. Pitch outside from Roseman, the count is 1-1 one one to China. Oakland failed in the 1st and it's raining in Chicago. It's raining in Milwaukee. Here it is 5-2 to two Detroit and we are in the home half of the 7th. Lined up on the pitch, Lowenstein chops the ball down the 1st baseline foul. Glove behind the bag, in foul ground by Thompson and the count is 1-2. is bounced to second and fly deep to center field. The Indians got a run on the third on a double by Norris, a sacrifice and Dade sacrifice fly. Got a run on the sixth on a double by Bakhti and a single by Thornton. Pitch to Lowenstein across the plate to blow and the count is even at two balls, two strikes. Ready again. 
Wind up, 3-2 pitch. Mullenstein hits a big chopper into right field, a base hit. Tyler takes the turn at first as Oglevy comes up for the ball, and the Indians have their ease into the ball game. First one for John Mullenstein. And it'll bring on Ray Fossey, the Cleveland catcher. He singled the left field in the second inning and struck out swinging in the fifth. Rosemont struck out two and hasn't walked anyone. Bullcalf throwing to the bullpen, and he is ready if they need him. Look for the sign by the right-hander. The stretch, check of Steiner, pitch to Fossey, swing and a miss, strike one. Again, the look in for the sign by Rosemont. Steiner creeping away at first base. Pitch to Bossy. Hit the shot to left field. Coming out deep. Kept on the run. Left to play on the bottom play. Almost got by him. He had to reach out and grab it. Here comes Ralph Howe very slowly to the mound. The runners at first and second. Nobody out of the seventh inning of play. Hope called is in the bullpen. He's crossing the foul line, and they're going to hush this baby off for Rosemont. It is. Back-to-back -back hits here in the seventh inning of play by Lowenstein and Fossey and the work of Dave Rosemont. He goes six innings, plus two men here in the seventh. Gives up nine base hits, seven of them single. The charge with two runs, both are struck out two, has not walked anyone, and we'll take a look at Steve Holcomb for it right after we take this time out. This is the old Jack, a new friend of Henley Chevrolet on Harcourt Road, just south of Mount Vernon. Hey, I want to talk to you about trucks. New trucks and old trucks, little ones and big ones. Just all kinds of trucks, with a size, style, and a price for anyone. And if we don't have a truck you want, Chuck Henley or myself will order it for you. Hey, how are you going to beat that? And don't forget that Ostander Hanley Chevrolet is also famous for service and parts to go right along with those trucks. So if you're in the market for a truck, give us a try, because we'd be more than happy to do our best to please you. That's Ostander Hanley Chevrolet on Route 3 and 36, just south of Mount Vernon. Or give us a call at 397-4725. And remember, we'd like to have your trade-in, and we offer you top dollar for it, so stop in and let us show you around. And many thanks from old Jack. Steve Focold, the right-hander, comes on. Focold for the Tigers. Coming in for the second time against the Indians. Focold has won three and lost two. Making his 16th appearance. He has saved six games. Focal with an earned run after 2.20. 28 innings and two thirds. 20 hits, 30 strikeouts, only six base on balls. Focal, six feet tall, about 205 pounds, and he's 27 years old. He will face the Indians, Frank Duffy with runners at first and at second. Nobody out here in the seventh inning. The Indians trail by three. Focal having a chat with Aurelio Rodriguez, the third baseman, before getting ready to work for Frank Duffy. Frank has bounced the short slide to left. Five to two, Tigers lead. We're in the home half of the seventh inning, and the Indians have the potential tying run at the plate. Really, and Crawford are in the bullpen for the Detroit Tigers. Stretch by full call on the pitch. Duffy takes low and in front. Ball one. He looks like he was fun. The left-hander is Crawford. The right-hander is Steve Grilly. Crawford was up earlier in the game. This is Grilly's first time. Full call. Puts in, gets the sign. Wallenstein leads at second. Fossey at first. The stretch, the 1 0 pitch. Duffy squares the button, takes a strike on the outside corner. The county comes up at 1 1. Jimmy Norris on deck. Steve Focal. Puts in and gets the sign. Nod. Stretch, check of Steiner, pitched it up, he squares the butt, takes low and outside, two and one. Thompson is on the grass at first base. Rodriguez just inside the bag at third. Both 
again looks in. Duffy levels the lumber and waits. Here's the pitch. Frank squares the button, takes it low. Ball three. Three and one. Seven footing. Indians with a chance to do some damage and get back in this game before one of their better crowds in a long time. Here's the stretch. 3-1 pitch, runners go! Ball clap foul to third, grabbed by Rodriguez. That's the bag, but foul, and it's a full count of three and two. Well, Frank Duffy now with a full count. Diner goes back to second, and Fossey to first. Steve Holtzholt, looking over to the third baseman, Rodriguez now looks in to Milton May for the sign. Nobody out here in the seventh inning. Here's the stretch. Pitch to Duffy. Runners go. Duffy swings away. It's a fly ball into left center field. Kept calling for it. Cruising over. Makes the catch and the runners retreat. One out. We'll bring up Jim Norris. Norris, a left-hand batter singled in the first inning, doubled and scored in the third, bounced to second base in the fifth. Two for three, has put the batting average up to 291. Well, they're giving him some room in that left field lane. Stretch by Foucault, pitch to Norris. Jimmy takes outside and high, ball one. on the dugout steps, third base side, picking up those troubles, watching the action. Tigers trying to wade out of a potential trouble spot in the seventh inning. Leading five to two, pitch to Norris, swing, and a miss on the count of even at one and one. Wayne Kuyper is on deck. Futo with a pretty good sinking fastball, a slider, and he throws a knuckleball. second, Fossey at first. Here's the stretch. 1-1 one, one pitch. Norris swing and a miss to the count of 1-2. I don't know what he's throwing to Norris here, but uh, Norris likes it, but he can't find it. Well, the first one he's throwing it was a slide, and the second one looked like a fastball was sinking. One ball, two strikes. Both called again. First looks up to see Steiner lead his second, and looks in for the sign by May. Here's the stretch. And a one-two pass to Jimmy Norris. Swing and a miss for Kenna. That is the first strikeout for a full call. The third by the, the Tiger pitching. There's Dwayne Kuyper. Kuyper singled in the first inning, sacrificed in the third, and flied to left field of the sixth. Officially one for two on the night. hit a big league homer. We don't expect that, but a nice base hit wouldn't be bad right here. On sign at second, Fossey at first. Tigers lead 5-2. Tribes out, hit him 9-6. Stretch and pitch. Kuiper fouls it off to the left in the upper deck. Strike one. Foucault taking a little stroll around the mound. Now comes up top side from the first base side. Wait while Kuiper steps back and then gets back in. All eight is on deck. Wolfgang looks in and gets the side. Here's the stretch. And the pitch. Kuiper takes a strike. At the knees, the count is strike two. Seventh inning, five to two. Tigers lead. Wayne Kuyper at bat with two out and two on. Foucault looks in, gets the sign. Here's the stretch. Look back. Two strike pitch to Kuyper. Foul ball straight back, and the count is still 0-2. Foucault Boston has broken that 4-4 tie at Fenway. They lead 5-4 in the sixth inning of play. The Yankees. Red Sox in a big weekend series. 
Here's the 0-2 pitch to Kuiper. Fastball going inside. And the count is 1-2. and two. We're in the seventh. The stretch. 1-2 pitch. Kuiper fouls it straight back on the screen. It's still 1-2. Off the screen and went down into the seats. Still one ball, two strikes. Now again, full called in Kuiper already. Lowenstein leads the second, Crosby at first. Two outs. Full call gets set with the one two pitch. He's ready, he looks, and he throws. Kuiper drives it, foul down the third base line. Oh, that's been a sweet shot. One to the count remains. Hollenstein back to second and Fossey back to first. Steiner and Fossey open the seventh inning with back-to-back -back singles, driving Rosen off the mound. Foucault has come on. Got Duffy on a fly ball to left and Norris striking out. Crawford and Grilly are still in the bullpen. Now Foucault looks in and gets the sign. Kuiper up tight on the left hand side of the plate. Here's the stretch. Look back, the pitch. Kuiper hit the chopper, first base side, slowly cap rolls to Thompson, steps on first, and the inning is over. Oh, so it's the same old story. No runs, two hits, two left. The end of seven, Tigers five, Indians two. Hey, what's the matter, friend? Same old story. Where to go and what to do. Hey, well, come with me, because we are going to get down at Marco Polo's, the Marco Polo Disco on West 5th Avenue in Columbus, the super disco for people over 21. Marco Polo has the finest selection of current music with ladies' night every Wednesday and happy hour all day long. Marco Polo Disco, 1605 West 5th Avenue in Columbus, open Monday through Saturday from 11.30 until 2.30 a.m. Marco Polo. Marathon is not just a gas station, it is truly a service station. This is Candy Shop, and take my advice and see my children and the guys at Cinnabur Marathon until your automotive needs. Sure, you can't beat Marathon gasoline, but there is no real service station in just gasoline, and that's just what Cinnabur Marathon is. They specialize in cleanup, oil and lube, stock work, brakes, and all preventive maintenance, and they do it from 5.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 to 6 on Saturday. That's Cinnabur Marathon on the main street in Cinnabur. Third, the Seattle Mariners just scored two runs in the top of the ninth. And it's Seattle 2, Texas 1 going to the home half of the ninth. How about that? Texas had led since the second inning, one to nothing. It'll be Staub, Kemp, and Thompson of the eighth inning for the Detroit Tigers. Tigers leading 5-2. Tigers are within a half game of moving ahead of Milwaukee. Milwaukee waiting for the rain to stop tonight at County Stadium. Brett against Sorensen, the Angels in town. That is if they ever get that one started. Cincinnati has just come up with four more in the sixth inning of play, and the big red machine is now rolling. Eight to three in the sixth inning. Don Hood, who has retired all eight of the men that he has faced since coming on in relief, throws to Rusty and Staub takes the curveball for a strike. Strike one. Steve Kemp is on deck. Wind up by Hood in the pitch, and Rusty swings and misses with a count. It's strike two. Got just a touch and put it right in the middle of Boston. 0-2 count. But Don Hood has been super in relief again tonight. up by the left-hander. Here's the pitch to Staub. He hits the bouncer back to Kuiper. Dwayne gobbles it up from the edge of the grass, throws on to first. Staub is out. One down in the eighth. That's nine in a row retired by Hood. Steve Kemp doubled off Kuiper's glove on a line drive in the second inning. Or I should say in the first inning and scored the second of two runs in the first inning for the Tigers. Since that time, he has grounded to short and grounded to second. He was the first man that Hood faced when he came out in the fifth inning of play. Waits left the first four and a third. A moment chance to be the loser. Lined up. And the pitch.
pitch, and Kemp looks at a breaking ball that gets by everybody back to the screen. Ball one. Left-hander down hook. Loosening up out of the mound with a few arm raises. Now here comes the 1-0 pitch to Kemp, and he backs away from an inside offering. The count is ball two. Get himself squared away with a 2-0 count. Now Hood is ready. Here's the windup and the pitch to Kemp. Strike and the count is two and one. Bakhti at first, Kuiper at second, Duffy at short, Dade at third, Rub in left, Norris in center, Lowenstein in right, the catcher's Fossey, and left-hander down Hood of the mound with one out and a 2-1 count to Steve Kemp. It's a foul ball back upstairs behind home plate. Two balls, two strikes. Five to two Detroit. Indians have out hit them nine to six. Indians have had two or three golden opportunities to score and have been unable to do so. But it's ready. Here comes the 2-2 pitch to Steve Kemp. Curve ball. They got the bat stopped in time. Full count of three and two. They fought the edge. The umpire home plate to take a look at Jordan Maloney. Maloney says he did not go. Good having retired. All nine men that he has faced. He spanned three of them. Good ready again. Here's the windup. 3-2 pitch to Kemp. He hits the ball down the first baseline. Foul glove behind the bag by Bakhti. It's still free and two. Red Sox add another run in the sixth. That it is Boston six. The Yankees four at the end of six. And Campbell has come on to pitch in the seventh inning for Boston. Don Hood working here in the eighth. up with the payoff pitch to the left-hand batter Steve Kemp and Kemp swings and this is striking. Yeah, Hood getting a curveball over in a good spot low and away. Jason Thompson is single to center field and fly twice to the left fielder. One for three on the night is single. Drove home Kemp in the first inning of play. Tigers led two to nothing, then three to nothing, then three to one, then five to one, now five to two, and we're in the eighth inning. Wind up by Don Hood, and the pitch to Thompson. Outside, ball one. Keep hearing the rumble of thunder off in the background here, but thus far, no rain. Uh, Let's so you drive that way in the you background. You better believe it. Here's the windup by Hood with a 1-0 pitch to Thompson. It's a strike down the pipe, but the count is even at 1-1. One one. Dan Ogleby is on deck, but there are two outs and nobody out in the eighth inning of play. Windup by Don Hood. 1-1 one, one pitch, and Thompson takes it low, and the count goes to 2-1. and one. Jeff Burrows just hit another one at Philadelphia. His 18th of the year. Atlanta right back in that game. Pitch to Thompson, chopped to first, grabbed off by Bakhti, going to flip to Hood in time, and the inning is over. Well, Don Hood continues to mow him down. Three up, three down. We're going to the home half of the eighth inning, and the score, Detroit five, and the Indians two. Is it true that Farrah Fawcett Pictures shops at Harry's Cycle Center at least three times a week? Well... Is it true that Harry's Cycle Center refuses to be undersold? Actually... Is it true that Harry's Cycle Center has $28.95 helmets for $12.95? Now that you... Is it true that Crazy Harry and his partners are just about the nicest guys you'll ever meet? And they... And that they want everyone to feel welcome? Not only is that... Is it true that Harry really is Evil Knievel in a salesman's costume? Why don't you ever answer me? All right. No, yes, 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 and no. 
Harry Cycle Center, 1486 Hebron Road, in Heath. Selling property is a very personal type of transaction that requires good personal service from the company that handles it. That type of service is available to you at Oliver Realty. Oliver specializes in rural property and residential property. They have eight years of experience in helping you find the proper home for your family. They handle property in Knox, Licking, Delaware, and Morrow counties. They also help you with financing information to fix your budget. Call Oliver Realty when you're ready to make your move. They're at 625-6566. On half of the eighth inning, Dave Bakke and Thornton against Steve Fulcault. The Cardinals will use John Denny at San Diego tonight against Randy Jones. Houston has just come up with three runs in the fifth inning to move on top of the Mets, four to one, and there may be a few unhappy folks at Shea. That's uh, Pat Zachary, their replacement, so to speak, for Tom Seaver in the big deal. Here's Paul Dade. Single, sacrifice fly, and a bouncing ball to third. One for two on the night. Wind up on the pitch, and Dade fouls it off to the right over the dugout out of play. Strike one. Kansas City has knocked out Jeff Zahn in the third inning of play. Buchholz says no, no, yes. Wind up, strike one pitch today. A high drive to center field. Going back is LaFleur in front of the 395 sign makes the catch. One out. Here's Bruce Bakke. Bakke is struck out, bounced to the first baseman. He doubled to right on a ball that Oakley misplayed. And ball sailed down through to the fence, and then Thornton drove him home with the Indians' second run. up and the pitch to Bakhti. Fastball low, ball one. The moment both bullpens are quiet. Wind up by the right-hander. Pukal delivers and Bakhti takes low, ball two. Tigers and Tribe tomorrow with two. Eckersley against Roberts. up and the 2-0 pitch to Bakke. He takes a strike on the inside part of the plate about belt high and the count is 2-1. Who called ready again. Andre Thornton is on deck. Wind up and the 2-1 pitch. Bakke swings and misses and the count is 2-2. Two two. It is all over at Texas in that first game. Seattle beats them 2-1. Pretty good ball game. Wind up and the pitch to Bakhti. A fastball a little low and the count is full, three and two. Mike Marshall, who was the winner here, took the loss working in the ninth inning of that game down at Arlington. Wind up, three, two, pitch to Bakhti. Swing and a foul tip at the plate and it's still three and two. Here's the windup, 3-2 pitch to Bakhti. Low ball four. The Indians put a man on with one out of the eighth inning of play. That is the first walk by Tiger pitching tonight. Andre Thornton. He is banged into a double play. Pops to third, single to drive and a run. Bocall looks him over. the sign. Runner leading at first base. Here's the pitch. Andre, a long drive. Left field. Way back. Gap at the fence. And it is gone. Five to four. And Andre Thornton glanced over the left field fence. Number five for Andre Thornton. Buddy Bill for the team leading home run. He's driven in three runs tonight. Now for Fulton, 
that is his third home run yielded and the 58th home run of the year given up by Tiger pitching. They've had the same trouble. Now on the bullpen, action for the Indians. Jim Kern and Sid Pontry. And on the Tiger side, Grilly and Crawford. Pitch to Grubb. Low ball one. It is five to four in the eighth. Wind up on the pitch. Grubb takes a strike knee high on the outside corner. One and one. Now Andre Thornton has brought the Indians back to within a run. Wind up on the pitch to Grubb. Her ball and a strike to the count of one and two. Looks in again. Wind up on the one-two pitch. Grubb swing and a miss. Struck him out. Second strikeout for football. Four by Tiger pitching. John Lowenstein is bounced to second, fly deep to center field, and singled into right. Indians are now out hit Detroit. Ten to six. The Tigers are clinging to a five to four lead in the eighth. left-hander, really a right-hander in the Tiger bullpen. Wind up on the pitch, and there's a drive in the right center field. Oh, it is gone! Oh. Indians tied up at five on home run by Barber and Wallenstein.
have come back from a 5-2 deficit to tie it up here in the ninth inning. With the left-hander, winds it up and throws, and a chop to the second baseman, Kuiper, up on a good hop. Wayne gets it, fires on the first two out. Aurelio Rodriguez. He has fly to right, bounce to the pitcher, and been called out on strikes. Rodriguez at the moment is hitting 221. Trying to wave Dade back a little at third base and over toward the line. The first pitch to Rodriguez is low, ball one. Not going against the double. Fisk has homered for Boston. It is the tenth time this year that the Boston Red Sox have had back-to-back -back home runs. That's what, this second of the game? Yep. The pitch, Rodriguez takes a fastball inside, and the count goes to ball two. Bossy out to the mound, have a little chat with Don Hood. Jim Kern is in the bullpen. The Indians have battled back to tie up the game. We're in the ninth, and it is tied at 5-5. Now the left-hander winds it up and throws, and Rodriguez takes low and inside, ball three. Don Hood has retired the first three, six, nine, thirteen men in a row that he has faced. He's gone three and zero on Rodriguez. Lined up by Hoodie, and the pitch to Rodriguez. Inside corner for a strike, and the count is 3-1. and one. Jim Kern and Sid Manchie are in the bullpen for the Indians. Good ready with a 3-1 pitch to Aurelio Rodriguez, and here it is. He hits it hard down the third baseline. Back hand it by Dave. He's going down. Well, they moved him over at the right time. Straight up, straight down. We're going to the last of the ninth. One run, and everybody goes home happy. The score to Point 5, Cleveland 5. Monday through Friday. And the roar you hear is for Buddy Bell. He's going to come up and hit. Jim Crawford, 6'3", 200 pounds, 26 years old. He is making his 11th appearance of the year, all in relief. No wins or losses. Has not recorded a save. Crawford with an earned run average of 4.50. 28 innings, 31 hits, 15 walks, 23 strikeouts. And he will face Buddy Bell, pitch hitting in the ninth, game tied at five. Buddy Bell getting a standing ovation from a better than 21,000 fans. This will be Bell's first pitch hitting assignment of the year. Crawford throws, Bell taps one out in front of the plate on a check swing. Bell by Crawford, throws, got him. One out of the ninth. Brings on Dwayne Kuyper. Kuyper is singled, sacrificed, fly to left and bounced to the first baseman. the Tigers, and this one turned into an ending. A 5-5 tie on the night. Crawford, the left-hander, winds it up and throws. Curveball. High ball one. The next pitch is low. The count is 2-0. All day, design deck. We're in the last half of the ninth inning. Lined up with the dual pitch to Kuiper. Curve ball inside, ball three. Three and oh. I'm wondering, Herb, if anybody deserves a victory here tonight, it's Don Hood. Boy, he has pitched outstanding baseball. To put it mildly. McDowell as the strike catches the corner on the 3-0 pitch. 
Wind up on the pitch to Kuiper. Curve and a strike. Full count of three and two. Crawford again. Kuiper wraps it down the third base line. Foul ball. Foul ball. Just foul down the third base line. Oh, that was close. Pitcher of the night throws and Dade swings and misses, and the count is one and two. The next pitch, Dade hits it hard in the hole, it's short back into my stripper. He's got a long throw. two-thirds innings, and they were perfect innings. He did not allow a man on base, striking out four, and what a superb job by Don Hood. He retired 14 men in a row. Now Jim Kern picks up the pitching duties. We're in the tenth inning, tied at five. Kern making his 28th appearance of the year. First pitch to Corcoran. Did it hit him? No, it did not. Very close. He just got back out of the way. Ball came all the way back to the screen. Jim Kern with an earned run average. 3.09. One win, three losses, seven saves. First appearance against Detroit this year. In his 28th appearance of the year. Cochran batting at 222. He's been to bat just 45 times. Hits two home runs, eight RBIs. Foul back on the screen. Cochran, 5'11", 175 pounds. Last year played at Montgomery, where he batted 309. Freddie Kendall running in from the bullpen. Jim Kern winds it up. Here's his pitch. Fast ball over but low. Two balls and a strike. Kern sets with the sign. Here it comes. Foul back. Up against the press box. Into the press box. Two balls, two strikes. The Indians have battled back. They trailed at one point in this game. Three to nothing. Then it was... Five to one, and they have battled back to tie it at five. Andy Thornton having a big night with a single driving in a run and a home run and driving in two. And pitching by Don Hood that was just outstanding. Fastball up too high. Three and two. 
It'll be Cochran batting for Scribner. Then we go to the top of the batting order with LaFleur and Puente. 3-2 pitch, foul back on the screen. Count remains, ball three, strike two. The Indians have tied it with three runs coming across in the eighth. Hi, Poppy, behind the mound, coming on is Buddy Bell. He's there and he makes the play. Right alongside the mound. Buddy Bell pinch hit in the ninth. He's in the game playing at third base. Paul Dade has switched from third to right field, and John Lawstein has shifted into center. Ron LaFleur. LaFleur has walked, home it, tripled, and fly to center. So officially two for three, and he's had a pair of RBIs. Right hand batter takes inside ball one. Pitch is a swing and a miss. Fastball blew it right by him. The floor backing out is home plate umpire Terry Cooney dusts off home plate. Jim Kern wiggles the fingers on his right hand as the sign. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Another good fastball. Jim Kern out in front of Ron LaFleur. Ball, two strikes. Ron LaFleur steps back in. And he is playing straight away in the outfield and fairly deep. Ball one, strike two. Kearney winds and he throws. Fast ball, swing and a miss, strike three. He just blew him right out of there. Well, Jim Curran picks up a strikeout, and that's his first. And for the Tigers, they have watched five of their men go out on strikes tonight. Four by Don Hood. Here's Tito Fuentes. He's 0 for 4 in the game. Fuentes, the switch batter, coming up left-handed. Part of the action, batting at 3-10. That will take a dip. Fast ball, too low, ball one. Jim Kern winds it up. Here's his pitch. Fastball right through the middle strike. Buddy Bell at third base is right at the edge of the cut of the grass. Playing Fuentes around the left. A ground ball. Stuffy over to his left. Has it. Throws. Gets him. Jim Kern takes him out. One, two, three in the tenth inning. And going to the bottom of the tenth inning. The score here at the stadium. The Indians five and the Tigers five. In the 10th inning, it'll be Fred Kendall. He'll pinch hit Bruce Hockney. Freddie with a batting average as he strides up the home plate of 238. He's hit three home runs as 10 RBIs. Freddie obviously not too happy. He's not catching as much as he's liking. Can't blame him for being unhappy. That's the way it ought to be. You have to be unhappy when you're not playing, but Freddie with a good, solid attitude stands in. Will be Kendall, Thornton, and then John Grubb schedule. Crawford winds and he throws. A curve is inside, ball one. Crawford came on in the ninth, retired three men in a row. We've seen Roosevelt, Polkholt, and Crawford for the Tigers. Waits, Hood, and Kern for the Indians. Boy, that Hood was outstanding. Retired 14 men in a row. Fastball over the outside corner of strike. One ball and a strike. Good Kendall backs out. Strides back in. This was Kendall's first pitch hitting role this year. Wind up, pitch, curveball tapped over the mound, coming on Verizer. Shortstop gloves it, throws and gets him. Tom Verizer has just come on to play shortstop. Griffin was pinch hit for. So Kendall out on a 6 3 play, one gone. And here's Andy Thornton. Boy, what a night he's had. Single in the sixth to drive home the run, hit a home run in the eighth to drive in two. 
And Ron Pruitt moved into the next position of that but he grabs. Ron leans down and gets that lead donut. And it drops it in the on deck position. Slider over the inside corner of Drake. Five home runs and now ten runs battled in for Andy Thornton on the year. Lined up, the left hand throws. Check swing, it's up too high. Ball one, check one. Boy, it'd be great to see this fella get hot. It'll do the Indians a world of good. And Cord will hit the grub. He's on deck. One out in the tenth, tied at five. Change up is foul back on the screen. Ball one, strike two. Thornton backing away, knocks some dirt from his shoes. It's Terry Cooney, the home plate umpire, dusts off home plate. And well, one swing of the bat, Andy Thornton could send 21,452 here into Bedlam and home happy. Swing and a miss. He got him with a fastball, let a high. Well, is out. Two men down in the 10th inning. And the batter now will be the... Pinch hitter Ron Pruitt. He'll be batting for Johnny Grubb. Ron Pruitt with a batting average of 267. No home runs, two RBI. Two men out in the tenth inning. Crawford has retired five men in a row. That was his first strikeout. Pruitt is 0 for 3 as a pinch hitter. Inside almost got him down around the knee. Ball one. Ball came off the end of May's glove back to the screen. Indians battling from behind. They have tied it. Five to five. Inside again. Uh, the feet of Crook Pruitt. Two and oh. John Lowenstein on deck. He tied it with a home run blast in the eighth. And the pitch. Who would take the strike at the knees over the outside part of the plate. Two balls and a strike. Two one pitch, check swing, taps it foul down the first base side, picked up by Coach Rocky Calavito. By Cooney, throws that ball out, he'll give another one to home to home to catch him, May, who tosses it out to the pitcher. Two men down, tenth inning, game tied at five. Now Crawford doesn't like the ball he gets, he wants another. Indians have 12 hits in the game. Tigers have had but six. Two and two, pitch. Curveball pops up, shallow right field. That goes to Wendy, second baseman, about 30 feet in the outfield. He makes the catch. Well, the Indians are retired in order in the tenth. One, two, three, three up, three down, nothing across, and we go to inning number 11 with a score. The Cleveland Indians, five, the Detroit Tigers, five. Changes now for the Indians. Ray Foster will be playing first base. Kuiper at second, Duffy at short, Bell at third, Pruitt in left, Lowenstein in center, Dade in right, Kendall catching, and Jim Kern on the mound. And from Boston comes word that the Red Sox banged out a 9-4 win over the New York Yankees tonight. And they had 34,557 at Fenway Park. And that is a full house. Stop. Left hand battery slide to center field, bounced to first, doubled into the right field corner, driving in a run, and bounced to second. He pops the first one foul back into the upper deck, strike one. The last 17 Tiger batters have gone up and down in order. 14 in a row, courtesy of Don Hood. Kern put him away one, two, three on the 10th. Stop was the last man to get a base hit. That was back in the fifth inning. His double drove in the fifth Tiger run. Wind up in the pitch. Stark takes low and inside, and the count evens up at one and one. Kern looks in and gets the side. One one pitch coming to the left hand batter. Low and inside. Two and one. We're in the 
the 11th inning. Now some of the West Coast games are starting. The Cubs will use Kruko tonight at Los Angeles against Putin. Wind up and the pitch. Staub, it's a high pop-up. Third base side foul. Bell coming over. Kendall over. Bell in front of the Tiger dugout makes the catch. One out of the 11th. Brings on Steve Kemp. He doubled. Drove in a run with it in the first inning and then scored. Bounced to short, bounced to second, and struck out. Kansas City, 5 to nothing over Minnesota in the fifth at Kansas City. The Big Red Machine rolling along, 8 to 3 over Montreal in the eighth. in and gets the sign. The first pitch to the left-hand batter and Kemp takes his strike of the knees. Strike one. Jason Thompson is on deck. Turn shakes off one side. Shakes off a couple more. Now here's the wind-up and the strike one pitch. Kemp takes low and the count evens up at one and one. A 5-5 tie on the top of the 11th. The Indians about hit the Tigers. 12-6. Indians charged with the only error of the ballgame. Pitch to Kemp. He drives one into left center field. That's a base hit. Over to get it is Ronnie Pruitt. Kemp is on, and that ends the streak. 18 men in a row retired by Cleveland pitchers prior to that hit by Kemp. That's some pitching. Jason Thompson coming to that. Thompson singled in the first inning of driving a run. Since that time, has flied twice to left and bounced to the first baseman. Now Kern is coming out behind the mound. Kuiper and Duffy are going to get together for a little chat out there. One out and one on in the 11th inning of play. is over and Kern comes back topside. Kendall catching now here at the 11th inning of play. Tops in the batter. Here's the pitch. There's a pop-up foul back into the upper deck and the count is strike one. by Kern. And the strike one pitch to Thompson. He pops a foul to the left side. That'll be an upper deck souvenir. And the count is strike two. Jim Kern now wants another baseball. We are in the 11th inning. A 5-5 tie. Indians were down 5-2 and battled back. Home runs by Thornton and Lowenstein tied it up in the eighth. in and gets the sign. Kemp leads Fossey holding it first. Two strike pitch to Thompson. Curveball floats outside and high. One ball, two strikes. Top half of the 11th inning. Well, they have reposted the pitchers at Milwaukee and they're going to start the ball game. Over, well over an hour late. Almost two hours late. I think a little over an hour late. Here's the pitch. There's a foul back into the upper deck. Went back like a zipper, and the count is one and two. But it's still a long wait, but we have been in Milwaukee through some of those rainstorms, and they can really get it. And they can really wait, too. Yes, they can. Jason Thompson at bat. One out and one on. Game all tied up at 11. Old Libby is on deck. Here's the stretch. One, two, pitch, it tops it. It's a very high fly ball to center field. Coming on, Lowenstein, still coming, still coming. Fades off at the left center to make the catch, two out. We'll bring on Ben Oglevy. 
Kendall wants to go out and talk to Kern. Oglevy is single to right, bounced to second, struck out, and fly to center field. Kansas City continues adding runs. They are up six to nothing over Minnesota in the sixth inning of play. Second game down there in Texas. Gary Wheelock against Nelson Bryles. Seattle fails in the first after winning the opener two to one. Stretch by Kern, pitch to Ogilvy, runner going, pitch outside, Kendall drops the ball and sliding safely is Kemp. Steve Kemp with a stolen base and for Kemp it is his second stolen base of the year just don't run. They have had only 23 stolen bases and 43 tries. Conference time. Kern, Duffy, Fossey, and Kendall. It's a 1-0 count. 5-5 time. Well, George Foster just hit another home run at Montreal, his 17th of the year. It will give Cincinnati at least a 9-4 edge in the ninth. two home runs here tonight. And I have a total of 29 for the year. Tigers have had one home run. They have a total of 60 on the season. Here's the stretch by Kern. The pitch to Oglevy. Low rolls away from Kendall about four or five feet, but there's no go by Kemp and the count is 2-0. Oh. Mike Schmidt has just hit another home run for Philadelphia. They're blasting home runs tonight. Unbelievable. All over baseball tonight. Kemp at second, two outs, and a 2-0 count on Ben Oglebe. The nod by Kern. The look back and the pitch to Oglebe. He takes it outside, ball three. Milt May is on deck. I'm going to put him on. This will be an intentional pass, and there it is. So Oglebe is walked intentionally. Putting runners at first and at second with two outs in the 11th inning of play. That is only the second walk by Indian pitching tonight. Waits the starter, walk one. Runners at first and second. Here's the first pitch to Milt May, a fastball, low ball one. Milt May is lined to left, popped to left, bounced to second twice. 0 for 4, and Harvey Haddix is heading out on the field. Harvey Haddix running to the mound. Home run for Mike Schmidt. Now gives the Phillies a 10 to 5 lead over Atlanta in the eighth. Enos Cabell, remember him? Used to play for Baltimore. He just hit a home run for the Houston Astros in the eighth inning with a man on. Back with two men on, and the Astros lead the Mets 7-1. to Harvey Haddock setting back into the first base dugout. Two on and two out in the 11th inning of play. Indians who battle back are now trying to stay even and pull this one out. Turn the stretch. Here comes the 1-0 pitch to Milt May, and May takes a strike. Went high on the outside corner. The count is 1-1. One May holds that bat about as high as anybody I've seen that way in a long time. Here's the stretch, the 1-1 pitch, and May socks it foul right back on the screen in front of us, and the count is 1-2. and two. Paul Matazuski has taken over as the ball man as it has arrived at that hour of the evening where Sam Beach has to go to work. Not that what he does in front of the screen is not work, but his normal everyday job. So go over there to the post office through sleet and wind and hail and snow and all that kind of stuff. Here comes the one-two pitch to May. Swing and a ball struck out. Second strikeout for Kern. The 11th inning is history for the Tigers with no runs to hit or walk and they leave two. We're going to the last half of the 11th inning and the score remains Cleveland 5, Detroit 5. Crawford in the 
the 11th inning, we'll look at Lowenstein, Fossey, and Duffy. It was Steiner who tied it up with a blast in the eighth. Defensively for the Detroit Tigers, Thompson at first. Fuentes at second, Verizer at short, Rodriguez at third, Kemp in left, McClure in center, Oslovy in right, May catching, left-hander Jim Crawford on the mound. It's Crawford in turn, the pitchers of record now. Lowenstein, two for four on the night, had a single in the seventh, and then a homer to the eighth to tie it up. Lined up in the pitch to Lowenstein, the curveball, the swing, and a foul tip of the plate, strike one. League. Baltimore is one, Boston is one, and the Yankees have lost. Here we are on the 11th, and it is anybody's ball game. Wind up for the pitch. Steiner is swing and a miss, and the count is strike two. A 5 5 tie in the 11th. Pitch to Steiner, swing and a miss, struck him out. Lowenstein, a strikeout victim for Crawford. And he's put together a pretty good swing. That's seven in a row he's faced, and he's gotten them all. Crawford came in here tonight, having gone 28 innings. Now, 30 innings and a third, and he has struck out 25. Here's Ray Fossey. Fossey, three for four tonight. A single in the second that was wasted. Struck out in the fifth. Singled in the seventh to knock out Rosma. Singled again in the eighth. Pitch to Ray, Fossey takes low and outside, ball one. The Boston Red Sox are back in first place in the American League East with their win over the Yankees tonight. Wind up on the pitch, her ball, strike of the knees, so the count is even at one and one. Pitch to Fossey. Ray takes low and inside. The count goes to two and one. Long look for the sign. The left hander wheels and deals to Fossey. And Ray checks swing bounce to the mound. Knocked down by Crawford. Picks it up. Throws the first and got it. Two out. That caught Crawford twisted around in his follow through and he had to recover. He actually put his hand behind his back and between his legs and knocked the ball down. Duffy the batter. Frank tonight has gone 0 for 4. Pitch to him and he takes high outside ball one. We're in the 11th inning. Two outs and nobody out up by the lefty and the pitch to Duffy. Curveball foul to the screen and the count is even at one and one. Well, a bit later, we'll be playing an afternoon game here at the stadium. And Dennis Eckersley will be going for the Indians against Dave Roberts. One pitch to Duffy. Frank hits it up in the air to left center field. Kemp is coming hard on the dead run. Slows up a little bit and makes the catch to retire the side. And it's another three up, three down session for Jim Crawford and the Tigers. We have played 11 at the stadium. And the score remains Cleveland 5 and Detroit 5. Is have left five on the bases. The Indians with five runs, 12 hits in an error, and they have left seven men on the base. Fastball outside, two balls in a strike. We have seen some relief pitching here tonight. Hood came on, worked four and two thirds innings, faced 14 batters, retired them all. Foul ball coming back into play for the Tigers. Crawford came on. He's worked three innings, faced nine batters, retired them all. Jim Kern has worked two innings, given up just one hit and a walk, striking out two. Don Hood, in addition to retiring all 14 men he faced, had four strikeouts. Some performance. Two balls, two strikes. Bill Minkowski leading off in the 12th. Foul ball back upstairs to our left. Tom Verizer on deck. 
Kaminsky played third base the whole time that Rodriguez was laid up with that bad ankle. 2 2 pitch. Fly ball left field. Ron Pruitt hasn't played perfectly. Comes in a few steps, waits, and puts it away. One up, one down in the 12th inning, and here's Tom Verizon. This will be his first at bat. Verizon batting at 177. Two home runs, 14 runs batted in. Early in the year, the Tigers alternating shortstops. Verizon. And Wagner, then they sent Wagner down. Swing and a miss, strike one. In this game, Scribner started at shortstop. He said Verizon had not been feeling well. Pitch by Kern, he swings and misses again. Strike two, he just blew the fastball by him at the letters. One out of the 12th inning, we are tied at five. Indians will have the top of the batting order coming along. Jim Kern winds and he throws. Bouncing ball over the mound. Duffy near the bag of second. Gloves it. Throws across. Two men out. Ray Fonte at first base. <laughs> Jim Kern thought there were three out. He ran into the dugout. Here's an adder. He hurt himself. I don't think Here, Robinson's got something wrong with his shoe, Herb. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened. And there's something wrong with it. I got a stone in it. He's taking his shoe off. Jimmy Warfield and Frank Robinson standing there working on him. But two men are out. 12th inning. Top of the batting order. Ron LaFleur will be coming up. The Indians watched as the Tigers went on top 3 to nothing. The Indians made it 3 to 1 with a run in the third. And the Tigers with two in the fifth made it five to one. Indians picked up a run in the sixth when Thornton banged in a run with a single. They added three more in the eighth to tie it. A two run homer by Andy Thornton. A solo shot by John Lowenstein. And that's how we stand. Here's Ron LaFleur. He is homered, tripled, and walked. So officially two for four. Turn winds and he throws. Inside, right around his chin. He gets back and hurries. The ball comes back to the screen. Kern walks back on the grass behind the mound. And here's the rosin sack perched up on the first base side. He's going back and sort of wade the baseball. Fastball, strike at the knees, right down around the knees, inside part of the plate. Jim Kern working on Ron the floor, 1 1 pitch. Fastball, foul back off the screen, strike two. Jim dropped down about three quarters side on and that's it. Ball one, strike two. Kern says yes to the sign. Now winds it and here it comes. Swing a foul back off the mask of Kendall. Also we've got a piece of the umpire going by. One ball, two strikes. Two men out, 12 fitting. First of a four-game series with the Tigers. Boy, they're all like this. Make plans to be with us. Inside and high, two and two. Jim Kern checks back to the infield. Buddy Bell behind the bag at third. About a step and a half from the line. Two-two pitch. Swing and a foul back again. Sits the screen and drops, drops off on the right side. Swing and a miss, right three. Jim Kern gets his third strikeout. And he sets him down one, two, three in the 12th. Nothing across. As we go to the bottom half of the 12th inning to score, Cleveland five and the Tigers five. Buddy Bell leads off the 12th inning. Game is tied at five. Buddy pinch hit in the ninth and bounced back to the mound. He checked the swing on the ball. Buddy Bell stands in. The pitch to him, a curve inside, ball one. Buddy's batting average right about the 300 mark. Five home runs, 27 RBIs. 
Crawford on the mound on the left hand has retired nine minute row. A curve slips it over the outside corner. One ball and a strike. Crawford came on in the ninth and he has been tough. Two strikeouts. Bell swings and fouls it back. Looks like he was trying to go to right field with the ball. Fouled it back. Indians with six, five runs, 12 hits and an error. Five runs, seven hits, no errors for the Tigers. Each team has used three pitches. High pop foul coming back. It'll be out of play. Catcher Milt May gave a couple of steps into the upper deck. Kuiper on deck, followed by Paul Days. Jim Crawford kicks some dirt off the top of the pitching rubber, looks in. Kuiper with that lead donut on the bat. In the on deck circle, loosening up. One two pitch, but he takes it inside, two and two. Cooney going to dust off home plate. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out in the 12th inning. Nobody on. And the game time at five. Jim Crawford winds it up. Here's his pitch. Inside, three and two with a curveball. Crawford's making his 11th appearance. He hasn't won or lost the game. And he's not had a save. This probably is the most impressive performance. Turn one average going in, 4.50. 3-2 pitch. Down low, ball four. The innings have a man on with nobody out in the 12th. First man to reach base against Crawford. He came out in the ninth. And the bat is Lane Kuyper. And in the bullpen, they're going to get activity for the Tigers. Grilly was up a while ago, and that's who's going to be a right-hander, Steve Grilly. Wayne Kuyper, one for four in the game of the sacrifice. They're looking for the bunny He bunts it. It's fouled in home plate. Picked up by May. The umpire indicating the ball hit Kuyper in the batter's box. Well, the Oakland game in Chicago was rained out, but up at Milwaukee, they have played their first inning after wading through the water, and Milwaukee leads two to nothing. Wayne Kuyper standing outside the batter's box, checking with the third base coach, Joe Nassif. Buddy Bell at first. Nobody out. 12th inning. Game tied at five. At third base, Minkowski in on the grass. He'll look for the bun again. Crawford has the sign. Checks on Buddy at first. The pitch. Pitch out. Buddy holding. One ball and a strike. Steve Grilly's a right-hander, and he is throwing in the bullpen for the Tigers. Buddy Bell about a two-and-a-half step lead at first. Crawford gives him a look, the pitch. He bunts it, it's foul again at home plate. One ball, two strikes. Oh, had that spin on it, hit in front of the plate, then has it overspin and came back right at Kuiper. Anderson, I guess. One ball, two strikes. The Indians trying to get a run that would end it. Pitch. Kipe is going to bunt again. He pulls the bat back out of the way. And the catcher may checking with umpire Cooney, who checks with the third base umpire Maloney. Maloney says he didn't offer at it. Two and two. Crawford threw him a slider down the way. Dwayne was leaning over the button, didn't offer at it. Two and two. And the pitch. He lines it out to third base and the left field. Bill hits second. He will hold right there. Oh, my. That could have ended it. Crawford threw a fastball low and away, and Kuyper slashed it to the third base side. Minkowski was looking for the button, was moving in. He threw his hands up just in time to deflect the ball and slow it down. 
Went on the outfield, Grant and Buddy Bell had to hold it second. Here comes Ralph House. Boy, that could have... Minkowski did some job had he not slowed that ball down. Certainly Bell would have gone to third, and maybe that ball would have gone all the way to the wall and scored him. I bet you Minkowski's life flashed in front of him when that ball was shot at him. He was only about maybe 65, 70 feet from home plate, and that was a bullet. So Kuiper with a base hit, runners at first and at second, nobody out. On the mound, the major, Ralph Howe, talking with his infield, Fuente, May, and the pitcher, Crawford, and we're going to get a change. Steve Drilly has been called on. Pitch to date, he's going to bunny does first base side, picked up by Jason Thompson, and throw to third to get him. One try does not work. Fielder's choice goes 3-5 on the out at third. Kuiper becomes the runner at second. Line at first is Dade. And now Fred Kendall. Freddie came on as a hitter in the 10th inning. He grounded out the short. One man out, two and on for the Indians, 12th inning. On deck is Andre Thornton. Up to high, a ball. Right for the runner at second. Fuente, he's a second baseman, over close. Who's going to keep him as close as he can? Big gap on the right side. Pitch to Freddie Kendall. Drive to right field. Coming on is Ogilvy. He makes the catch. And two men down, and now it's up to Andy Thornton. Well, he has been the man of the hour here tonight. Thornton has batted in three of the five runs with a home run and a single. Two hits and five trips. Kendall hit that ball hard. Ogilvy, playing fairly shallow, came in and made the catch. Sitting, we are tied at five. Two men on now, two men are out. Andy Thornton right down near the end of the bat. Steve Grilly checks on the runner at second and throws. It's high, ball one. Thornton hit his fifth home run back in the eighth inning. With three RBIs in this game. Curveball way up high, 2 0. Steve Grilly, fourth pitcher of the night for the Tigers. And the pitch. Ground ball foul outside the line at third, a bullet. Smashed that one on a short hop up against the. Rolled up canvas. The Cubs score two against the Dodgers in Los Angeles. The Dodgers batting in the first. Got that off the former Cub, Kurt Hooten. Bobby Mercer hit a two-run homer to provide the runs. Really to the sack of Ryzen. Squeezes it. Comes back up on top. Two balls and a strike. Down too low. It's three and one. Steve Grilly pulling out of the bill of his cap. Grilly, 28 years old. Says, I don't like this baseball. Give me another. By Terry Cooney, a black one. 21,452 here tonight. They have had a chance to get their money's worth and then some. Three balls and a strike. Knight the lead from second. Dade at first, and the pitch. Long drive, the game is going to be over. Way, way back. It is going to be the second home run. Andre Thornton has just hit his second home run of the game, his sixth of the year. And the Indians, with three runs in the 12th inning, win it 8-5. to five. Boy, and look at that reception committee at home plate. Andre is going to be mobbed at home plate. Oh, boy. Thornton has done it all tonight. He has batted in six of the eight runs. And so, 
and rooted him home. As he has a game winner here tonight with a three-run blast in the 12th that ended it. Well, we invite you now to stay tuned for the 10th inning show, or more correctly, the 13th inning show. I'll have all the scores of all the games, and Herb will be chatting with... Oh, he's going to try and get Andre Thornton? So he wants me to do the scores first. Well, fine, then we'll talk to somebody else tomorrow. <laughs> be that as it may, the final score here... The, oh, first of all, yes, got to get this in. Announcers for this broadcast are selected and paid by 3WE Radio. Final score in 12 innings at the stadium. The Cleveland Indians, 8th, the Detroit Tigers, 5.